Good morning, evening, and afternoon, no matter when you're listening or where you're listening. It's the Real Talk Podcast with myself, Cam Walsh, 27, Tyler, at Tyler C. Whitmore, and of course, George Carmi, Movies and Sub-14. We wish Seth were here right now. He is having a nice, lovely day with his mother and fiance, so I hope they're having a fantastic time together. Um, But today we have a packed episode, Uh, a whole lot of movie reviews. We didn't miss last week, but we backfilled last week with a Harry Potter episode. So go check that out if you're a big Harry Potter fan, because I think it went really well. And I also dressed as Voldemort. So you guys better go watch that fucking episode for that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but today we got Napoleon review, which I believe Tyler is the only one that saw. I know Seth saw it. Um, we can give his thoughts just based on his letterbox. So we get a couple more. Uh, inputs on that one we've got we got saltburn godzilla minus one may december wish um and then i'm sure there's i i watched uh best christmas ever technically a new movie it's the worst movie ever um but we have those releases uh we got tons of trailers this week it was a massive trailer week some minor movie news we'll talk about because why not um and then and then uh we'll end it with kind of flipping this week so our patreon recommendation this week was a top uh acting performances um we're just gonna have a general discussion around our top three top five whatever we want to make it it doesn't have to be anything um intense so that will be like our patreon recommendation and then our thursday uh video will be a game that i've created i think with this new software tyler's got us on um, we'll be able to make it a little bit more fun with the screen sharing and everything. Um, so hopefully that works out. We'll see. And then um, real quick review this week is Her, um, directed by Spike Johns. I believe I pronounced that right. Jones. 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 I honestly have never heard it said out loud. <clears throat> is it Jones? I, I always yeah. thought it was Jones. Yeah. I, uh, it was in my, so like early on in my TikTok career, it was in my top 100 movies. And I think I said Johns. Um, and I got a comment like, pronouncing it like this you dumb motherfucker you should kill yourself or whatever or whatever tiktok comment said you know um but i can't remember how i pronounced it actually but i was wrong um so yeah that's a fantastic movie i think most people should check it out and then watch that real quick review um uh, but to start us off george how have you been how are you doing how's Hi. everything going I'm good. Everything's going good. Week was busy. Uh, I was a bit MIA from work the previous week, so a whole lot of catch up to do this week, and then just a whole lot of, and I'm sure you guys can relate, just a whole lot of year end prep because I know a lot of people yeah. that uh, work with me and work for me are going to be taking off a couple weeks towards the end of the year. So, a lot to get done before you know we're we're a little short staffed going into the new year. A lot of new year planning. So, it's just been hectic last couple of days and weeks of work um other than that kind of chill um i've been back home on long island for a bit just no need to be in the city in the freezing cold it's a it's a fucking nightmare um but i'm going back today uh, and then movies obviously you know big part of our lives watch the uh, i will go through what we watched when we talk about that but yeah watch the watch the chunk oh yeah Awesome. Uh, how's Victoria doing? She's good. She's good. Yeah. She uh she started a new job actually not too long ago, so uh, she's what? been uh yeah, so she's been kind of uh very busy, working very hard um with her new job. Um you know obviously trying to make a good impression uh initially. Um and then same thing with her going into the new year. Just hectic time of the year. I feel like for anyone anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Good to hear. Tyler, how are you? Been solid. Been a busy week, especially yesterday. It was a super busy day. I posted like seven TikToks over on the sports I saw account. That. I saw that. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I watched every prediction you made. You saw well, yeah, yeah I, I did. I did. Well, actually, yeah, I think right. the only one I got wrong was uh, like majorly wrong was I thought I thought Oregon was going to win. I but thought anyways, Oregon was going to win. Too. Oh, is that um, the only one you got wrong? I thought. But then, uh, but then of course, like like basically the equivalent is yesterday it was like oscars day for sports like for the college football world in terms of so much craziness happen but it's like as if the oscar nominees were dropped and then like three hours later they changed and then like three hours later the award winner was going to be announced so it was just like a hectic day of predictions and then reactions and then takeaways and then today at noon eastern there's like the or sunday at noon eastern because it's uploaded on a monday the rankings get released so it's just been a hectic day for yeah. 
sports world to try to get all that content out for the college football account. So I've been super busy, but super excited to see what happens. Anyone who watches college football knows that today or yesterday for those listening is going to be like the craziest college football playoff announcement ever. And someone's going to be rioting in the streets regardless. One fan base will be rioting in the streets regardless, regardless of what happens. Someone's going to be snubbed. Um, so it should be exciting. But yeah, it's been yesterday. It was like I was just in my office from 6 a.m. to midnight, just straight working all day. Um, will probably be the same thing today if I'm being honest. But uh, before you yeah, move not... on to what else you've been doing, give give us your four. So this prediction is happening on Sunday at eight eighteen a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Give give us your four. <laughs> All right, my four. prediction. My prediction of what I think it'll be is yeah, one Michigan, yeah. two Washington, three Texas, four Alabama. What I think it should be. Really? What I think it should be is one. Uh, Michigan, two Washington, three Florida State, four Texas. But I, yeah. I, I think Florida I State should riot. I think right. I think while we're when this was released, you listen to this. Florida State University is rioting to the ground. The I really are don't burning. Know. I really students don't know are going crazy. Out. I don't know how they. Get That's what I'm saying. Out, I think but... I think there's gonna be it's, it's a Florida University. There's gonna be right. crocodiles right. in the streets. It's gonna be a crazy mm-hmm. riot. When does I, this I, get I, released? I, Noon well, Eastern. Oh, today. I'm thinking it. Uh... I'm thinking it's Michigan, Washington, Texas, Florida State. That's my prediction. I think Alabama is going to be rioting. So basically, Texas, I, Texas, Alabama, and Florida State are three teams that can only fit into two spots, and all three teams think it's like crazy for anyone to think that they wouldn't be included. So like one of those universities, at, while you're listening to this, is going to have a lot of frats hammered, throwing – fits florida state's undefeated and would 100 percent be in but they've lost two quarterbacks now um mm-hmm. i don't know if their second string quarterback will be back he had a concussion last night didn't he or did uh he? yeah so he'll be back yeah. in like a month okay like so he'll be back be. for that that's fine but like i feel like i don't know if you can make the call just be like i don't know they gotta they don't have their starting quarterback are they really that good because they haven't beat I, I guess they beat top 15 team last night i don't know George, it's like know. if Novak ran all the way through a tournament and was number one the entire time and won every single matchup, but then he like tweaked his ankle before the final, they'd be like, you know, actually you can't play in the final. <laughs> I know you won every game and you were yeah. number one the whole time, but you probably wouldn't be number one since you tweaked that ankle. So we're just going to, you're just out. You can't yeah, go. That That's basically what's Florida probably going to happen. That's what might yeah. happen with Florida State. Wow. Just because they got an injury and so now everyone's like, well, I, we know you earned it, but like. Sorry. Yeah. So it should be crazy. It should be fun. Continue other than that, on. the week's been pretty uh pretty standard week. Um yeah. Other than Riley that, doing um, well. Yep, working a lot. Good. Um she's a nurse, of course. She works at night, so we try and uh hang out and see each other when we can because we don't really like eat much meals together, which ended up benefiting me because I guess we didn't talk for two weeks. <clears throat> Last week we went to Texas for Thanksgiving. Flew to, but we went two days early to go to Austin. So people are familiar with like Texas geography. Austin's like three hours south of Dallas, and Dallas is where her family is. So we flew into Austin to tour some wedding venues as well as just like drive around neighborhoods because we're going to buy a house there. So we just wanted to kind of get the vibe because it's kind of hard from just Zillow and Google alone to kind of get the vibe of what like a neighborhood would look like for what you want to buy or what the vibe of a town is. So we were going to do that. She got food poisoning like the day we left. So like, as we were driving to the airport, she started being like, oh man, like I'm not feeling that good, but she always gets car sick and the airport's like 45 minutes away. So like, I just thought it was like, it's pretty normal for her to, and our parking garage at our airport like spirals up and you have to go a ton of spirals up to get to the parking garage. So she's usually always like, oh, I'm not feeling that good. So I don't really think much of it. We get on the flight and she's like, I'm not doing good. And I'm like, this, this could be interesting. Uh, she was in the bathroom like the entire flight. She was awful. throwing up a, an insane amount. It was not good. Like it's probably the worst flight I could ever imagine. Awful. We got to the airport. We couldn't even leave the airport in Austin because she like couldn't be away from a bathroom for more than like 10 minutes. Um, our rental car, we had to get to a rental car and drive 20 minutes to an airport. We had to pull over like three times during that drive on the side of the highway, mm-hmm. like <laughs> sketchy and just like, keep, like it was just awful. Mm-hmm. She was going through it. Then we basically just spent two whole days in the pitch black hotel room um i I was i was fine i was watching movies because food poisoning so i wasn't sick or anything so i was just like on my ipad watching movies didn't see the sunlight for a day but Hmm. we didn't we didn't do a single wedding venue tour didn't see a single neighborhood it was just like a deleted trip to austin we just flew in there just sit in a hotel and then drove up uh to dallas which it was fun in dallas good time um her family is like half texas longhorn alum half oklahoma alum so when we were there they were they both played, playing their right? their they were both playing their final games of the, of the 
season. So Texas won easily. And then everyone was watching the BYU game, hoping that they were going to beat Oklahoma state. So then Oklahoma would go in. Um, but yeah, her family is like big college football people. They're from Texas. If you're in America, you kind of know Texas is like the football capital. Like yeah. everyone takes it very seriously down there. Um, that they, they take it way more seriously than I do for sure. And that's saying something cause I take it insanely seriously, but they are scary about it. Um, but yeah, it was fun. Now I'm back here. Uh, good trip to Texas. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to not travel for a couple months. Um, but then once February starts, I'm traveling like all the time during the week, at least for work for like a couple months. But traveling is just something that's so fun, but so overrated at the same yeah. time. Like I just, it, it just gives me so much stress to know like, oh, in two weeks from now, you're going on like a five day trip. So and then it's like in the back of your mind the whole time, you're like, oh, I got to do all this to prep and stuff. And then you get back from it and you have this huge suitcase and you're like, man, I don't want to do laundry. I don't want to mm-hmm. unpack this shit. Traveling is just such an asshole, but it's worth it. Yeah, I. How was your week, Cameron? I'm with you. Oh, it's good. Um, I'm I'm Produced, going to Dallas. Yeah, rough. I, yeah, I guess I'm I'm not losing the mind my mind. Purdue lost again to Northwestern on the road. We Ty, Tyler texted me before the game and I'm like, how are they not favored by more and all that? And it's just it's just because Purdue we we're just like that. Uh, we get number one and then we lose this immediately on the road happens already calling being called the biggest frauds of college basketball <laughs> it's already happening it's fine we'll be all right um, well to your benefit like every top five team lost yeah, this week though was, so uh, college basketball is full of frauds this year yeah 11 of the top 25 teams lost um we get a chance to we get a chance to play arizona on the 16th uh, who will be number one at that time so um, we get a chance to play the number one team again. And I honestly, I have a good feeling about that. So Tyler, this is what sucks about it. So Indianapolis, um, I, I wanted to go to that game and I still might, who knows it's in Indianapolis. It's at, uh, like the Pacers where the Pacers play. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but it's on Saturday at four 30, the Colts game just got announced as Saturday at four 30, like the exact same time. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be at a New York out there. I I hate the city already, and Indianapolis is not really a a popping city by any means. Don't you it's, love becoming adults and getting older? The fact that we're like the traffic's just gonna kill me. Yeah, I can't exactly, be going there. Exactly, man. I fucking suck for that. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, it's just it sounds awful, man, to be traveling in that. And uh, we went to a, a Colts game the other the other week we went to the Colts Buccaneers game. I, that was Thanksgiving. Yeah, you had field passes. Week. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Got on the field, saw that like uh, right in front of like Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, my, um, my wife's cousin's husband got to follow the path there uh, works for the Buccaneers. So we got field passes, but I had to be on the buck side. I couldn't wear, I couldn't wear Colts <laughs> gear, which is fine. I don't really own any Colts stuff, um, but it was pretty cool to see that. And then um, after the game, we, we were up 10, we left with like five minutes left, um, you know, to beat the traffic as us <laughs> old geezers are doing these days, I guess. But I have a kid now, man. I'm too old for this shit. Um, so we we leave and we're trying to get out of there. Uh, and I we brought my truck and we parked in a random lot. Had to wait for other cars to come out so I could get some space to back out because I was in my fucking truck in a compact mm, spot. Truck and life. Yeah, I know. I'm an idiot. We're an idiot for bringing that, honestly. just I'm throwing that on me and Emma. We, <laughs> we should have thought of it. Um, but then we went down and got some nice dinner. It's fine. Um, yeah, as I was saying, though, just two two big games going on at once is unfortunate because I'm either I'm going to have to pick one to watch, but if I'm at home, I can watch both. Yeah, your your multi screen setup. There's yeah, nothing yeah. worse than as a kid going to like a a sports game with your family or, or like friends family, and it's like a baseball game. And say your your team, the home team that you're rooting for, is losing like six to two in the seventh. So like, all right, let's pack it up and head mm-hmm. out. And then they turn on. Then they turn, while you're yeah. driving out, they turn on the sports radio, and then you start hearing like, oh, it's six to three, it's six to four. They start coming back, and you're, I'm just you're sitting in the backseat of the car like. Yeah, you traffic's it, you worth it. Like we, we what, what was the point of even buying our tickets and going if we we're going to leave early? Yeah. And now we're missing the comeback. But George, That's for the best. Like sports, is, is is baseball the only thing you really go to in person? Because you went to a good deal of Yankees games, right? Not Mets, Yankees. Yeah, we went to a few Yankees. We've been to a few Yankee games we went to the, uh, over the last couple of years. What, what the U.S. Open? Tournament? Yeah, yeah, the US o- in- yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's just that awesome. once a year for two weeks, and that's it. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's mostly. I haven't been to like a Knicks game in forever. I think the last Knicks game Victoria and I went to was when we were home for winter break of like nice. our sophomore year of college, which at this point is like what six years ago, seven years ago. 
Um, and then same thing with like the Rangers games or the Islanders. Oh, Islanders. We've been to a good chunk of Islanders games. Hockey games are fun. Yeah, hockey games are fun. Hockey games are fun. Okay, um, so Knicks are the basketball team. Yankees are the baseball team. Islanders, Islanders are your hockey team over the Rangers. I don't have a preference. <laughs> yeah, so I've always stupid. wondered. With New he's York just people. stupid. Y'all got a bunch of teams yeah. Even baseball. when it comes to baseball, like I don't really have a pro. Like I, I follow the Mets because Victoria's family is a baseball family and they're Mets fans. Um, mm-hmm. Same thing with uh, football. I guess I'll call myself like Jets over Giants because same thing. Victoria's family was always has always been Jets over Giants. Mm-hmm. Um, Which both of the, well, they play in the same stadiums, and that's a little bit of a hike, right? Like yeah, that that um, yeah, getting, compared to the other like hockey and yeah, basketball. Yeah, getting getting to MetLife is a nightmare. Same, the, the traffic is just unbelievable. Uh, is there a train that goes all the way to like uh, yeah. Meadowlands or whatever? Yeah, you could take the train from Penn and then transfer it to Caucus, and then there's like a shuttle that takes you to MetLife, which actually that that's what we do when we whenever we go to a concert at MetLife. Mm. Um, but yeah, other than that, like I probably go to I I was at more tennis matches for the U.S. Open in that two week span than I've been at every other sport combined over the last year. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I swear though, I do remember that, like on Inst- your Instagram stories, like it probably I don't know a year, maybe it was earlier this season, I don't know, but I swear it was like you were at a Yankees game like three times in two weeks or something. Yeah, or maybe we, it was we like, went, like you and Sophie or something. And I just saw so much Yankees content. Yeah. I was like, these guys are living there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to a, I think it was two, and it was in a short period of time, and it was like earlier this year. Um, but no, we're not. I, I'm not a big. I'll never like lie and say like, oh, I'm a huge baseballer rangers mm-hmm. hockey or football person i, I follow football because of the fantasy leagues that i'm in but mm-hmm. other than that i'm not just like randomly tossing on a baseball game to watch right cam am i crazy or is there no indiana baseball team why can't i think of one we have a huh? minor league team yeah oh. uh, we have a minor league team uh uh the the i believe we're the indianapolis indians so yeah. Real creative. Yeah. Right. yeah. It took a Real. genius to come up with that one. Not not big enough to get not big enough to get our name changed yet. I don't think. I don't Playing think the Arizona know. Zones next yeah, week. Exactly. <laughs> not really. Didn't go crazy with that one. Um I'm a Cubs fan, but it's only when like I just say I'm a Cubs fan. It's only if they're like only in 2016. Yeah. What, what, it's yeah. only when they're in the playoffs. That's when I'll turn on baseball for the first time um other than that good week nothing nothing new a lot of work emma's doing well uh bailey is with my parents this morning we went to my parents last night my uh my aunt and uncle were there and my grandma um so we saw them and as we were leaving i was going to a movie <clears throat> and my mom asked if we wanted if uh she like could have bailey over the night overnight and i said hell yeah <laughs> um, so we'll get him after the pod, which is kind of nice. Emma's still sleeping in. I got her breakfast all like set up in the room, uh, with some coffee and stuff. So that's nice. Uh, um, but yeah, good, good week overall. Um, we'll move on to movie reviews. We will go. Oh, sorry. Never mind. We'll go to <laughs> what have we been watching? Uh, this time I'll start with Tyler. Tyler, what have you been watching? I assume a whole lot. Yeah. So let's see. We haven't talked in two weeks. So I'll just kind of jump around here um what have i been watching so when we were sick in that hotel room uh i was just stuck with my ipad watching movies so i started off with re-watching licorice pizza because i don't know i haven't seen it since it first came out still really enjoy it i don't like love it it's like a four star for me i uh, watched american beauty for the first time with kevin spacey um pretty pretty solid movie i think i didn't like it as much as most people but 3.5 out of 5 i i, I did enjoy it um kevin spacey is an all-time creep but uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, Love Actually. Also, I'd never seen that rom com. I feel like that's one of the most iconic like rom coms ever. If people are a fan of Love Actually, it's re releasing in theaters, like remastered for the 20th year anniversary this weekend. So go see Love Actually this upcoming weekend if you want to. Uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was another first time watch. I was just knocking out first time watches while in that hotel room while Riley was going through it. Um, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was just a blast. That movie's so fun. I don't know why I put it off for so long. It'd be so good. Yeah, it's it's awesome. And then I was in a Michael Sarah kick, so I, I rolled that right into Juno, which also I thought was a, a nice, delightful movie with Jason Bateman being an all time creeper and that channeling his inner Kevin Spacey. You'd never seen Juno? No, I was, oh my God. I was knocking out all these That's movies like, that I should have seen a long time ago. That's a classic. Yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of people would say that about, I feel like a lot of people would be cra- think it's crazy I hadn't seen Scott Pilgrim yeah, vs. the world. That is nuts. Too. Um, rewatched Hamilton on Thanksgiving and then on the flight back, watched rewatched Triangle of Sadness and then, uh, 
once I got back to Arizona. Watched the talents of Mr. Ripley because a lot of people were c- comparing that to Saltburn. So I wanted to watch that before watching Saltburn. Um, there's a new doc- documentary on Max, David Holmes, The Boy Who Lived. It's about uh, Harry Potter's stunt double. Mm-hmm. Watch that. It just gives you a whole newfound appreciation for like stunt men and what they have to do. And it's just crazy that like I feel like and people on film Twitter and people like us like not in the movie industry but people who kind of like watch a decent amount of movies and more than like the average person i feel like even us still like we don't have a full appreciation even when we're out here saying like oh there needs to be like a best ox or oscar for best stunt work which i agree i still think like it's just like we still don't comprehend just how crazy the stuff stuntmen have to do so um definitely a cool documentary if you want to kind of get a behind the scenes on what the world of stuntmen is like then i burned through the purge franchise nothing really stands out there they're all pretty average but they're kind of fun for what they are, I guess. Um, hmm. One one of the few franchises that like the first one I think is like one of the worst and then they get better. Not like crazy better, like three stars kind of where it peaks. But I think they definitely got better than the original one with Ethan Hawke. Um, then I watched Wish. So I posted on Twitter and saying like if the Vikings lose to the Bears, I'm going to go force myself to see Wish as punishment. And then, of course, didn't really realize that, of course, as a kid's movie, so like 7 p.m. was like the absolute midnight latest dusk showing of a movie like Wish. So I was like, well, I guess I'm going to have to wait for tomorrow for this one. So soundtrack banged, but the movie just was not great. And, Chris Pine, uh, a good know. singer? Is what? Is Chris Pine a good, a good singer? I thought he was fine. I thought Ariana DeBose was really like the one who was really yeah. making the vibes go. Performance and everyone lost their mind. When she, you mean when she, yeah, when Angela Bassett did the thing, <laughs> and uh, the 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 salt burn guy was in the front row. That was funny. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. That was very funny. I like uh, that. Yeah. Um, watched uh, we watched a ghost story for the real quick last week. So if you didn't catch that one, go watch it. We all loved it. All three of us here reviewed it. So uh, definitely go check that one out. Um, it's great. Then Maestro, uh, Bradley Cooper. George, I, I already asked you this too. George, you did see it, right? Yeah, I saw it at the film festival. Yeah, yeah it was like it was, it was very fine. I don't know. I, I yeah, I, you are. Hold on, you're a fraud. I gotta call you out. You tweeted <laughs> that like Netflix has been putting out bangers lately, and you had Maestro in there, and you gave it a three star. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess like that might just be the, the point of the tweet was kind of saying like they really yeah, like brought it for like trying to get like a Netflix. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is I needed a third in there because I hate the way the Twitter formats stuff if you have like three Stand. images. So yeah. I was like, all right, Rebel Moon, you're the fourth one going in there. <laughs> yeah, I love which that. Which I'm excited for, but I'm like, I know people are going to be like, oh, why did you include this or that? <laughs> yeah. So well, I yeah, saw I that tweet Ma- and I immediately, I was like, didn't he give Maestro a three star? Like, I don't remember. Yeah, well, like the point was I was trying to like say like Netflix is bringing the heat for like trying to get Oscars this year, but I couldn't find a fourth one. And I just hate freaking three image tweets. <laughs> I, so I was I like, I'm just going to change this to like brought the bangers. So um rebel moon shout out you you got you yeah. got your sneak in there shout out uh and then just caught up on releases which we'll talk about like i'll real quickly review them when we actually get to that point but like saltburn napoleon rewatch the holdovers drop down from a 5 to a 4.5 which of course like as always on letterbox people like commenting the world ended they're like what happened what changed i'm like i mean think back to when i was a decimal guy before it was probably a 9.5 now it's like a 9.4 so it's really not that big of a deal <laughs> i just i just think oppenheimer is still my number one of the year and, and needed to get that get that spot back. And then, like I mentioned, we watch her and we'll be reviewing that on Friday. So that's kind of all the many, many things I've been watching these past two weeks. Awesome. George, what have you been watching? Been like heavy. I, I always hate to admit, like, it's been a heavy rewatch couple of like days, but your stats on the year were crazy for Dude, rewatching. I know. First watching. My yeah. stats but now were I like need to look at mine. 20, George. Re- I said, okay, okay, re-watch, mine was what, like 58, yeah. 42? Like, yeah. I, I guess I just, I don't know. I enjoy rewatching the films I love. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, same. Um, but yeah, I just like this week I rewatched La La Land. I just tossed that on while I was working yesterday. Uh, or Friday, and then I watched Mad Max because the Furiosa trailer came. Like, there's a reason why yeah, I rewatched yeah, yeah. shit. No, like, I get it. I get it. Um, so I rewatched Mad Max, and then um, it was like 11 o'clock at night that same day, and I just couldn't sleep. So I was like, let me just toss on the social network. I opened Netflix, and that was like the first movie that I saw. So I was like, fuck yeah, that's a quick hour and 50 minutes. Um, and then Her was a rewatch for a real quick that we're doing this week. Um, I did watch a first watch, this movie called Prospect from 2018, starring Pedro Pascal and Sophie Thatcher. Um, this uh, small indie sci-fi film, really, really, really solid. I'm shocked that only me and one other mutual haven't logged and rated on Letterboxd. I think it deserves a lot more attention. It's a 
really solid movie, especially if you just, you know, want to scratch that unique or, or refreshing sci-fi itch. Um, Godzilla minus one, which we'll talk about later this episode. I finally checked off Thanksgiving. Thought it was good. I think everyone's overreacting. Um, it, it's fun. I said watching like Eli Roth just having fun with these kills and just the kills are fucking crazy and they're like dope. They genuinely like put my jaw on the floor. But other than that, just didn't find myself caring about anything in this story. Um, I watched this fan made Batman film called Batman Broken Promise uh animated um really really stunning like if i had watched it not knowing it was a fan-made film i would have thought this was a very high budget studio made um batman film with just how good the production was um the holdovers i finally checked off i know i was late to that party but um in my now top six of the year it was in my top five but i put godzilla above it um how to train your dragon one and two i don't know why i i felt the need to to re-watch both of those but i did um i watched this movie if you're like me and you want like uh i guess like horror-esque fun christmas movies watch anna and the apocalypse uh it's like this really cute movie musical about just this zombie outbreak and just a whole lot of fun and it's it's a quick watch it's like an hour and 40 i think um musical numbers hit um i think ella hunt in the lead was just adorable and she just carried the movie like crazy um definitely worth it and then i also watched krampus and christmas bloody christmas um just to add to my like holiday gore fest which both of those were pretty good christmas bloody christmas was really good um just super retro super neon um very savage in its kills um and yeah that's about it i don't forgot the last time we talked what i mentioned that if i i went on a godzilla kick and watched a whole bunch of older godzilla movies uh oh and, and lastly victoria finally got me to watch the holiday she's been trying to get me to watch that probably for the entire eight years of our relationship um so i finally awesome. caved yeah finally caved finally watched the holiday Thought it was pretty good, actually. Pretty cute standard movie um, or standard holiday movie. Um, definitely an enjoyable time. But that, that's about what I've been watching. Awesome. Um, as always for me, definitely less than y'all, but watch some. Been on a shitty Christmas movie kick. Uh, my favorite kind of movies to watch. Um, I got in the spirit, you know. Uh, so I watched Angel Falls Christmas. Uh, this one stars shit what's his name uh he's he like used to be really famous uh chad michael murray uh he's awful like he might be the worst actor ever now <laughs> like, what, he's terrible. what was he in that was big one, one tree hill was the only one, thing was right? that what okay. he was in uh no was that him uh, why am i thinking what? what am i thinking of chad michael right now i'm thinking of something chad. am i crazy was he not one tree what? hill am i losing my mind he was with... he was one tree hill you're right sorry okay. uh he was okay. in freaky friday as well uh, Gilmore Girls, movie. House of Wax. Yeah, he was he was in it back in the day, but that might be. Oh, he's got more Christmas movies. Maybe this <laughs> dude hit like a like come to like major Jesus moment or something. He's got Too Close for Christmas, White oh. Before Christmas. Seems a little racist. I'm thinking um, of uh, I'm thinking of Chaz Michael Michaels, Will Will Ferrell's character. That's the fake one. Yeah, yeah from um, <laughs> from Blades of Glory. That's yeah, what, okay. That's Michael Michaels. That's funny. <laughs> um, so that sucked. I watched and and I, I got to get back on the shitty Christmas movies. No, you don't. No, you don't. Uh, Twelve Days of Christmas was. Uh, I believe like that. Oh, that was the Groundhog Day one. So she just keeps waking up and like has to become a better person. All that jazz. Uh, Christmas Inheritance uh, features Plop from The Office. I think that is Pete um, from like season nine of The Office. Is that uh, the glasses one with the black hair? No, is that the brown the... hair that like is like kind of okay. the new gym or something? Okay. Um, this is basically like rich person. Get... It's Klaus, but worse. It's <laughs> new per like rich person gets sent to town learns christmas spirit all and then learns that her dad wasn't an asshole and he really loves this town just an asshole to everyone else i guess <laughs> um i watched klaus which is certified banger man that thing's i'm so excited cool. to rewatch that one that's that that was, i remember you recommended that last yeah. year and i loved it good movie. it's so fucking good man uh i did re uh, i did watch soul as well outside of the christmas realm 
um, which I just fucking love soul. Um, my favorite Christmas movie is the year without a Santa Claus. So I just threw, I threw a five out of five onto it. Why not? I tossed that on my watch list. Yeah. It's, it's old, like claymation shit, but like, it's just, (laughs) it's like my favorite Christmas movie. It's what I loved as a kid, that sort of thing. (laughs) And then I watched best Christmas ever from this year. And I think that's kind of what killed the Christmas vibe. (laughs) Like it was awful, man. It's genuinely horrible. (laughs) It's got the dude from American pie, uh, Jason Biggs, um, and then a whole lot of nobodies after that. But, oh, is that it, the one with the uncomfortable poster where they're like weirdly hugging split screen? Yep. That's exactly what it yeah, is. That, yeah. yeah, uh, that, one looks yeah that one sucks, man. Yeah. It's just so fucking bad. I, you know, Does Emma like, watch these with you? No, no, no. Emma watched this one with me, but she, this was like a, we, we were laying in bed. I just turned on Netflix and it was the first thing recommended. And I was like, fuck it. <sighs> I knew it was it. I knew it was a new movie, so I guess goes in the 2023 watch wine. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw Victoria gave it a one star. Yeah. A one star from Victoria, I feel like, is rare. That is uh, she, yeah. That, yeah, that is, she did not like that movie. <laughs> yeah. I watched Thanksgiving. Uh, uh, George, I, I liked it. You guys uh, watched it like the same time. You were like yeah, texting each other yeah, back and forth. Yeah. I think I was like five I, minutes behind. I Cam. did. I I did have the killer predicted right. I almost like. Yeah, that was the most annoying part of the movie. So spoilers for Thanksgiving, but it came out a couple weeks ago yeah, and yeah. already reviewed it. But the killer's Patrick Dempsey, and that's one of those things. Like as soon as Patrick Dempsey got cast in it, I'm like, he's probably the killer. And then the whole movie, I'm thinking, I don't really want it to be Patrick Dempsey. Maybe they go something else, but it was. The Which whole time, I was like, please, like. It's either Patrick Dempsey or Addison Ray or the killer. Like, okay, it's, it's that's. Bad. Okay, so I was thinking, immediately, I was like, it's Patrick Dempsey. Like, just like Tyler said, it's like one of those things, like when someone gets cast, you're like, okay, that's the killer. But like, even as the movie went along, I'm like, it's Patrick Dempsey. Like, it's so obviously Patrick Dempsey. And then for a while, I was like, okay, maybe they're like going to make me look like a bitch. I thought for like. A split second, it was the football kid that like broke his arm. Mm-hmm. I thought that's who it was gonna uh, be for like a I very. I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be for a split second the uh, the the new boyfriend who always. But he. Yeah, I those th- are like the two that they yeah, wanted to make. You I, think I think that would have been yeah. too obvious. I think yeah. the football player, like he broke his arm at the uh, and his at the at the yeah. the thing at yeah, the yeah, Black lost. Friday. I thought he was a baseball player or baseball, whatever he was. Yeah, yeah, I think it was baseball. You're right. Yeah, yeah, because he was a pitcher. But I was like, okay, that would make sense. Like he lost whatever a potential scholarship. He lost his baseball career, so it would make sense. But the entire movie, I'm like, they're just making it's too obvious. It's too obvious that it's Patrick Dempsey. I'm like, please do something to make me look like a bitch, and just yeah. make me look stupid. And they did. It, uh, uh, yeah, I, I wish, I wish it were different. I, I don't know. I'm fine. I didn't hate the reveal. Like, no, no, I, knew I didn't hate the reveal just, either. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. I still thought it was a good reveal. Like it made sense. Yeah. But yeah that's fair definitely that's fair. dampen the experience that's fair um and then i should note we watched the last of us last week like just kind of grinded through that good show good show, Great show. We watched, i feel like i i never have a lot of movies and that's 99 percent of the time like eva and i will watch a show because we only like shows together like she doesn't like any movies that i like and i don't like any movies <laughs> she likes um but we watched the last of us we watched ted lasso over again um We'll probably re- the whole uh, thing right- you just ripped through it all not last week but yeah, okay, in, the last yeah. Cu- in the last couple of weeks we did both of those um Is third and- season still just a big let let down on rewatch too i don't know if it's it's i tweeted like that it has the same traje- trajectory of the mandalorian which i do think it's mu- definitely a drop it's not nearly as big of a drop for ted lasso as the mandalorian was i think uh, which I still enjoy both the shows, but it, it's not a huge letdown. And the ending's really great, and it's like super campy bullshit where they're um, all happy. And but like it's Ted Lasso, so I'm a fan <laughs> of that. You know, like they've just fulfill every Easter egg and every tease that they've ever given. Like I just, I'm like, that's all right. I like this. This is great. Um, they teased the fourth season. I think Nick Monahan, the actor who plays uh, Nate, tweeted something about a fourth season, um, and just. It's it's not going to be it without without Jason Sudeikis. It's just not going to hit. Um, we'll see, though. But, you know, we always say we'll have a quick episode or try to move along. And it's 35 episodes, 35 minutes in. And we've we've only we haven't even touched the movie. So let's let's move on to Mr. Napoleon. Uh, short little guy who's angry, <laughs> uh, starring starring Joaquin Phoenix, Vanessa Kirby. Um, what one, one of Seth's most anticipated movies of the year. I'm delaying to pull up the synopsis. Napoleon Bonaparte, that's the like synopsis of him 
of, of actually him. So let's find the movie now uh, <laughs> and look at the military commander's origins and his swift, ruthless, ruthless climb to emperor uh, viewed through the prism of, of his addictive and often violative violet. Jesus Christ, I cannot <laughs> read right now. Napoleon oh. is a personal look at the French military <laughs> leader's origin. There we swift, go. Ruthless climb to emperor there we viewed go. through the prism of Napoleon's addictive, volatile relationship with his wife and one true love, Josephine. Thank you. So yeah, we're, Instead of touching grass, we're finally going to touch some new movie releases. So I think Napoleon, Saltburn, and Wish, are, I'm the only one on here that's seen all three of those. So we'll, we'll, I'll be going pretty quickly through them. And yeah, I know Seth had already seen Napoleon and Saltburn, and he'd already touched on them briefly as well. So it won't be uh, – we're not going to go too in-depth here. But for the people that did see it, because December has so many new releases that I was like, maybe we could delay until more people see these. But I'm like, we, we have so many coming out that like we, we kind of just got to put these November movies in the past at this point. Um Napoleon was one of the most anticipated movies for a lot of people. I mean, it's Ridley Scott, and he's making a, an epic two-and-a-half-hour movie about one of the most notorious conquerors in history. So, obviously, people are going to be very excited for it. And Joaquin Phoenix is a star in it. Vanessa Kirby is a, is a supporting. It was just very fine. Like, And, and I, I haven't really seen anyone who came away with it loving it. I've seen a lot of people say it's either fine or they just really disliked it. For uh, a two-and-a-half-hour movie... It feels a lot longer. I mean, this thing just drags and it's because they, they focus the, the movies mainly focus on Napoleon and his relationship with Josephine, whereas the wars, the conquering, the stuff people know Napoleon for in the history books is really an afterthought. And clearly, like it's intentional. Ridley Scott decided the way that he wanted to attack Napoleon's life was going to be different than what people expect and kind of show that he was not only a flawed leader, but a very insecure man that used conquering and military prowess as a way to compensate for a lot of insecurities, but it just kind of made for a less exciting movie. I know a lot of my friends saw it because this movie did well at the box office. Cause it's definitely like a big dad movie. Like you see a Napoleon war epic, you're going to want to go see it. And a lot of people that I know that went and saw it, they kind of came away. They're like, yeah, it was just boring. Like it was just too much Napoleon and Josephine and, and not enough of the, you know, the stuff I was expecting to see when I bought, you know, my family Thanksgiving tickets to see on the big screen, you know, this, this war epic, there are definitely war scenes in it. Um, they're well shot in terms of they're on a grand scale war epic that you're kind of just watching from a 360 view or a top view of just these big, large set pieces of these massive wars and a lots of death. But I don't know. It just never felt that memorable. There was never any intimate war scenes, really. It, it, like in Saving Private Ryan, I feel like that's what really makes it stick with you is there's so many intimate close up moments with the characters, with the death with the killing where you're just like up in their face right there where you can just honestly feel so much more attached to them. And it just feels so much more impactful when you see the war taking place from that side of the point of view. But Napoleon, you're kind of just a little removed from it. It's always just like, all right, we're done with Napoleon Josephine. Let's do like a quick cut scene of like 10 minutes of going to like the battle of Waterloo or the invasion of Russia or some war and just show a bunch of cannons being fired, a bunch of people jump in and a bunch of blood spewing. And that's like, all right, let's get back to more dialogue. So didn't really care for it. It was pretty bored, but it was honestly one of the funniest movies of the year. I think Napoleon and the killer are two November releases that no one really expected coming into the year would be com comedic comedies, but both of them ended up being that way. Napoleon's character is just a lot of the lines they give him are just dry, pathetic lines, honestly. And Joaquin Phoenix is, We've seen him with Bo is Afraid this year. He can play that kind of blithering, pathetic kind of dude pretty well. And he, he did it again here in Napoleon. And his relationship with Josephine is just pretty hilarious, honestly, because she is just honestly like a borderline dominatrix in terms of she's clearly the dominant one in that relationship. She has all the power, and he's just kind of, you know, a bumbling little insecure man who throws fits if she doesn't write him letters. And and she's just cheating on him all the time, and he he – can't do anything about it. And it's just, he, he's just a funny man. So it's a pretty funny movie. It's good comedy, but in terms of a war epic, it left me wanting a lot more. I've seen a lot of obviously people that have broken down the historical accuracy of the movie, not just in terms of like, you know, what they're wearing or, you know, not firing cannons at Egypt, but I've, I watched a lot of like historian videos saying like the whole timeline's even off. And like he was in places in this movie, he was never in, in real life. And it's, I've talked about it before. I think historical accuracy is pretty overrated in movies, but there's like a point where I, if I'm going to see a movie like Napoleon, I want something where I can I think like, you got to get some right. 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 Like, like, like I want to come away from it being like, Oh, I feel like I learned like something here, but like, 
I, I, I saw like one historian guy's TikTok, which I never had never seen him before. But apparently, he's like a big like history guy on TikTok, and he was like mapping out the Napoleon movie and how like it went down in the movie, and he was like drawing like the map of how the movie had him go, and it's like completely different than from where he was in real life, and like. They were like saying, like showing him scenes in the movie, like with Marie Antoinette in France. And he's like, yeah, they they never met. He was never in this place in the first place. And it's like definitely took a lot of liberties to just kind of just make the movie more interesting. And uh, I don't know. Ridley Scott was kind of an asshole with this movie. So I don't really feel bad, like not really loving it. Like, yeah, it's the same thing with James Cameron, like where it's like they're just kind of asses. But I I, the movie James Cameron made, I liked, whereas Ridley Scott was an ass about a movie that (laughs) that was kind of boring and I didn't really like. So I'm going to be a little more, you know annoyed about it but uh that's napoleon I, I my fiance's mom texted me last night saying like have you seen napoleon is it worth the watch and you know i try to be a good source of movie recommendation so i just like texted up paragraph I was like honestly i wouldn't recommend going to see it i think most people would that are because i know like the type of people that like if you're trying to only going to see a couple movies this year when you see napoleon you're thinking you're going to see a big war epic on screen you're just not and i'm like it's yeah almost three hours long feels a lot longer i guarantee if i told you to rec- go see this movie you'd come back and be like that was so boring too long so i'm mean, just gonna say like no wait till it comes out on apple tv plus probably in like february since this was an apple movie but yeah it's napoleon I, and lastly joaquin phoenix i love him he might be one of my favorite he might be my favorite actor of all time honestly but this is bottom 10 percent performances from him he was just not very interesting in this at all vanessa kirby was great though she was awesome but um napoleon or joaquin kind of seemed like he phoned it in i don't know didn't love the movie but that's napoleon would you give it again out of five three out of five i was close to 2.5 but the, the comedy is really the only thing that saved it saved it for me so this is like a really low end three out of five but there was enough that i enjoyed that definitely made it a positive as right, opposed to a negative but definitely wasn't anywhere near what i would ever expect out of a ridley scott joaquin yeah. phoenix collaboration all right that's so that's Napoleon and Seth was also the same way. He gave it a three out of five and I know he was, he was disappointed by it, even though it was like his most anticipated of the year. Um, mm-hmm. And then Saltburn is a, a movie that is like a, a very much a Twitter isn't real movie because Twitter will make you think like this is the worst movie ever made and that Emerald Fennel should be in like a, a, <laughs> like a pr- prison, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a prison for the rest of her life. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it's a 3.7 on Letterboxd and the, the, and not even just that the ratings distribution is like the least um the least controversial thing you'll ever see it's very much just looks like the at&t logo basically where it's just as the ratings go higher it's you know climbing up and up and up Mm. um yeah we'll salt burn but uh, seth gave it a two and a half i think he gave it a three initially dropped it on two and a half i gave it a three um but all my mutuals on letterbox have a couple people gave it four and a half a couple people three and a half a couple people one and a half so it's really just running the gambit in terms of film twitter but uh yeah, let's get into it. Saltburn synopsis. We're all about to lose our minds. Struggling to find his place at Oxford University, student Oliver Quick finds himself drawn into the world of the charming and aristocratic Felix Catton, who invites him to Saltburn, his eccentric family's sprawling estate for a summer never to be forgotten. Um, Felix is Jacob Alordi. He's kind of the the posh, rich guy whose family lives in this mansion where his mother is Rosamund Pike, his father is Richard E. Grant, and he invites Barry Keoghan, who's a Oxford University student, that they kind of cross paths, and you kind of think Barry's kind of the typical student that's, you know, just an average guy, just a normal student, whereas uh, Jacob Elordi's, you know, the it guy, he's the rich guy, everyone wants to be his friend. Um, and from there, uh, a lot of people kind of akin it to towns of mr ripley where barry kind of barry keoghan kind of gets a very strong affinity for jacob lordy and wants to become his friend and maybe more than that and uh, from there we kind of just go on this crazy adventure of uh, barry going to saltburn and that's where the movie's at its peak like the first hour of this movie is so fun like the set design you're at this rich mansion everyone's in incredible costumes the production design is so fun the score the score and the soundtrack both combined in this movie are so so intoxicatingly fun had a blast with it like i think it's definitely a, a soundtrack i'd probably listen to just on my drive like it, it soundtracks banging production designs banging so it's just a very fun vibe and atmosphere for this movie for the first hour and then the second hour starts to devolve it's one of those things that a lot of people on twitter have been saying like oh it's like i can't believe this scene this scene was so crazy and disgusting it's really like nothing would really shock you there's been a lot more gross stuff this year alone um it's 
I don't know. Like, uh, there's just a lot of things that happen in this movie that I think people like reacted to thinking like it's like disgusting and like shock value, but it's really not, nothing that real. I was. Yeah, Twitter isn't real. It wasn't that crazy. Um, but the final hour, I just didn't love the writing. I think the the screenplay was the weakest part of this movie. I think the final reveal of kind of what it builds up to is really the weakest point, and kind of as as a result, when your writing is the thing that suffers, that kind of ruins the crux of the whole movie. But this is about a two hour long movie. And I'd say the whole first hour is such a fun blast. And I was completely locked in. And then as things start happening in the, in the next 45 minutes, it starts to fall apart for me in terms of the messaging they're trying to get across, which I'm not going to spoil because enough people haven't seen it because it's a pretty limited release. Um, but I'll, I, I talked about it a little bit more in my letterbox review. But the next 45 minutes will unravel a bit. Didn't love that. And then the final 15 minutes I thought was like a really cool, fun reveal. Like I, I dug it and the. Uh, a lot of fun things happen where actors really commit to their roles, but it didn't feel earned based on the prior 45 minutes. So I think the big thing is like the second half of this movie, if you buy into it and you like it, this could be like a 4.55 out of five. Cause there's a lot of fun things that happen. And that final review would be reveal would be so satisfying and fun. But if you don't really buy into or dig that final 45 minutes, then the final review is just going to be like, uh, this is just kind of really losing me. So it's a, it's a tough movie for me. Cause I give it a three out of five, but, it's really just a tale of two halves where I love the first half, did not care for the second half at all. Um, but yeah, I really like Promising Young Woman, uh, which is Emerald Fennell's first movie that she won an Oscar for. This is her second film. I don't think she should be in jail. I think it's kind of crazy that people are, you know, so anti Emerald Fennell. It's it's the same thing I think of as Brandon, Brandon Cronenberg's Infinity Pool, where someone coming from a privileged background is trying to make a movie about privileged people. So it's kind of like weird. Like it's like, can someone who's uber wealthy really properly make a critique of the uber wealthy? Some people might think that might be impossible. And honestly, I could probably listen to those agreements and, and agree that maybe someone super wealthy couldn't make a critique of the super wealthy, but it's the same thing with infinity pool. That was a very bombastic and crazy movie by someone who grew up very privileged, but I still enjoyed infinity pool for what it was. I didn't love it. And that's kind of the same thing. I, I came away with Saltburn. Um, yeah. And that's kind of it. I know a lot of people loved it. No, some certain people hated it in the middle for me, but it's definitely a movie that I think everyone should see. Cause I'm excited to see people's reactions and takeaways. Cause there's a lot, a lot going on here. I love Jacob Elordi. I love Barry Keoghan. Roseman Pike's great as well. Carrie Mulligan's in this. I feel like it was just like a favor to Emerald Fennell in terms of, uh, she was in is promising like young her, woman. Her thing now is her and, and Carrie Mulligan. It might, I mean, yeah. Cause Carrie it Mulligan, might. unless I'm like blank and she was in like the movie for like a dinner scene, had maybe like a line, and it's not even like I'm not. It's not even like she dies or anything. It's just like she just like shows up, has like a line, and leaves. Like it's just kind of like I feel like it was just she's just going to be an Emerald Fennell movie or something at this point because I was kind of like going into this. I was like, oh, she's in this. I'm surprised no one else is talking about it. And everyone's talking about Maestro, and I'm like, oh, it's because she's in it for like a minute. But yeah, um, yeah, that's it for Saltburn. Three out of five. Um, same thing as Napoleon. I did. If, if I was going to rewatch a movie, I would rewatch Saltburn a hundred times over before Napoleon. But in terms of overall rating, it just gets on my overall rankings. It's definitely above Napoleon, but they're both three out of fives. And then finally, and most quickly, I'll just go over Wish. I'm going to spend like two minutes on this. So synopsis is the latest Disney animated movie. Um, trying to follow up their banger of strange worlds from last year, which was the biggest flop of all time for <laughs> Disney animated studios. Um, so wish is be careful what you wish for. Asha, a sharp witted idealist makes a wish so powerful that it is answered by a cosmic force, a little ball of boundless energy called star together. Asha and star confront a most formidable foe, the ruler of Rosas King Magnifico to save her community and prove that when the will of one courageous human connects with the magic of the stars, wondrous things can happen. Um, starring Ariana DeBose and Chris Pine. And it was fine. It's like, it was far from the worst thing I've ever seen from Disney far from the best thing I've ever seen. It was just very average. I gave it a two out of five because really the only thing I really liked about it was the soundtrack. The rest of the movie is so forgettable. Like I think I even wrote this in my letterbox review that by the time I take this like five minute drive home, I'll probably forget everything I just saw. Cause it was just such a bland, boring and just like meh movie. But Ariana DeBose has some bangers. And I think the movie's called the, or the song is called the wish, which is just a, a iconic song. Love the song. But uh, also at the same time, it felt like a song, I like, honestly, when I heard it, I was like, have I heard this before? Like the Disney release a soundtrack earlier or something. And I don't think I did. I think it's just Disney has such a formula with their songs and their movies that everything sounds familiar. And like, you've heard it before, which is kind of what I felt with like the wish soundtrack. I'm like, all these songs sound so familiar, but I think they're just kind of have their formula. They plugged in some new words and, and out came the soundtrack, which I did enjoy. It's never but, bad though. It's never bad. 
no, never bad. Um, but the movie tries to be so ambitious because it's like they're like origin story for the Disney magic universe. And uh, it just didn't really connect. Like, I feel like they tried to take such a big swing with what they were going for, but the execution of it ended up being so safe and boring that I was just kind of shocked with the end. I was like, Oh, you're really trying to go there. Like trying to really make this be like a, a big Disney anime. Cause it's their hundredth year anniversary this year. So they wanted to make yeah. like a big, big thing for this movie wish. And uh, I think they knew it was going to fail in terms of, I don't think they thought it was going to be that great of a movie because I really did not see much advertising for this, which is kind of the same as Strange World, um, hmm. which is which. But it's even more crazy to me for Wish because it's like their hundredth year anniversary, mm-hmm. like this big movie they're trying to push. And I feel like I didn't see like anything for Wish, but maybe it's just because the the communities I'm in don't really, you know, isn't they're, they're not. I'm not their target audience. They're going for you know the younger crowd. So um, two out of five for me. Soundtrack is. Uh, probably the only thing that's worth worthwhile for this movie so if you want to see wish just listen to the soundtrack in a car that's probably the best part about it uh it'll be on disney plus in like a month probably and uh yeah i i don't think the budget was as crazy as strange world because the animation and that was so insane oh yeah that's another thing they like had so many callbacks to disney movies like oh mirror mirror on the wall and like prince charming and all this stuff where it's like it was similar to like the fantastic beast movies. Like that's the vibe is giving us like, they just threw stuff at the wall. Like, remember this, remember this, that was awesome. Like you should love this as a result. Same thing with the animation in this and the aspect ratio they copied or not copied, but they had the same aspect ratio as like sleeping beauty and all the iconic Disney animated movies from, you know, almost a century ago, the animation style was not made the same exact way of like the 2d animation of old times, but they tried to emulate that as opposed to like strange world, which is a very 3d animation. And uh, yeah, I just feel like this movie was just trying to throw everything at you that people love about Disney and just be like, you should love this because you loved all of this that we did. And it just didn't work for me. And I don't think it'll really work for most people. It's a 2.7 on letterbox on average. Um, All my mutuals are right in the middle, like two, two and a half. So it's like, you know, not terrible, but not really worth a trip to the theater unless you have like a a kid or something that loves Disney movies. I think, uh, sorry, I'm just popping in. Uh, Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I figured. I figured it wouldn't, you would be, but I feel like I saw, I think I saw Reagan tweet this. I think Disney plus, and I completely agree, like killed Disney animated movies because Disney animated movies are not ones you, as an, I'll go to them because I want, and I'm sure there are a good amount of people that would, but you're not going for the most part because you really want to see wish you're going because your kid really wants to see wish, but your kid doesn't fucking know when it's coming out or whatever you can wait till that shit gets put on disney plus and then show your kid wish and that's i i wouldn't take if i if i had that option wish is going to be on disney plus in two months i'll wait for that like for for bailey you know i i think especially with disney movies it's killed because napoleon and killers of the flower moon you can say these gotta be seen on the big screen hell godzilla minus one this got this has to be seen on the big screen wish (laughs) <laughs> does it though does it really it, are you getting any more viewing experience from the big screen versus my phone like <laughs> really you know so i i i kind of think that was like the best take i saw all week is that disney plus like especially for disney animated or pixar movies just like kills kill kills it so um yeah wish oh also i had to step away for a sec so i told you guys i set up emma with like coffee and stuff i we have a warmer that um like keeps your coffee warm. So if you were sitting at your desk, you would keep your coffee warm. I, I, I was thinking, right. I'm like, I'm not going to keep it in this Starbucks cup. I'm going to transfer it to a ceramic cup. So it doesn't have any chance of burning or melting. Apparently at the bottom of the ceramic cup was like a rubber, like piece <laughs> of just, I, I assume it's so that like the cup doesn't slide mm-hmm. or anything. Yeah. Melted completely on this <laughs> thing. So that's what she called me up to see. Cause she just oh, woke man. up. Uh, so that's funny. But moving on, we'll, y'all we'll should go. do Godzilla next instead of May December because I, I just talked for so long and I want to. That, that's break. fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll go to we'll go to Godzilla. Um, so Godzilla minus one. Uh, Je- Japan is already devastated by the war when a new crisis emerges in the form of a giant monster. Short and sweet synopsis, perfect Easy. for this movie. Easy, yeah, because it's it is just like it's it's exactly Godzilla. what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is just like it's a Godzilla movie, yeah. but it's fucking awesome. <clears throat> um. I still don't know where I'm going to rate it. I, I, I'll throw. I'll this throw was like, I, like out of the theater. This was like the fastest four and a half out of five. I could have yeah, given. I think, I think I'll throw an 87 out of a hundred at it. So four and a half out of five. 
Um, it was Fox, just, you know what? I spent like so. the last, like whatever, two weeks, like watching so many Godzilla movies, like all the entire monster verse. Um, and then a couple of like the old <laughs> uh, Japanese ones. Um, and like, I'm just not blown away by anything. And like a lot of people have a lot of these older Godzilla movies at like a four and a half or a four. And I don't think I've put one up higher than a three and a half yet, even in the monster verse. Um, so this was just comparatively to what I've been watching. This was hydrogen bomb to whatever that meme is crying. Coughing baby. What is it? Coughing, baby. coughing baby. That, that is what the comparison is like, this is by and far away the best Godzilla movie I've seen. Um, it was just I have Godzilla vs. Kong rated pretty highly. I kind of love that. I movie. saw, yeah, you got that at the four and a half. You got to rewatch yeah, that movie. I might have to. I, I rewatched I it and lowered today. my rating. I was thinking that, like, or I was thinking that last night after I saw it. I'm like, well, now, nah. so, so my, my thing with Godzilla vs. Kong, and I think that the U.S. Godzilla does this, like, it has a trajectory upwards because it gets less and less people and just more kaiju's fighting. Yeah. But I think this movie was a great way of, like, kaiju's being not fighting because there's no other kaiju other yeah. than godzilla spoiler i guess <laughs> but also mixed in with like human characters that you actually care about i don't give a fuck about any character in godzilla yeah. vs kong but it's got so much kaiju's fighting i love it. <laughs> like i'm so in the that's like, like the shittiest awesome. parts of the monster verse it's like there's so much time spent not focused on godzilla and like even the but original verse kong man it's just battles no for, awesome. for like the last like 45 not even for like the like last like half hour up until like where mecha godzilla comes in we're focused so much like when they're in the um the underworld area or whatever the mm. hollow earth and like yeah, yeah, yeah. half of them like turn on half of them i'm like i just don't give a shit about mm. any of this like get me to where kong and godzilla meet face to face yeah, but that's what minus one does so well. It's like this post World War Two, just look at like grief, and now this dude has to like and grief and guilt and PTSD because of his prior experience with Godzilla. Now Godzilla is like three times larger. Which, when Godzilla pops up for the first time in this movie, I'm I'm, I'm looking at him. I'm like, he's tiny. Like he's small as shit yeah. right here. Like he's a yeah, small yeah. dude. So I was like, is he going to be like this way the entire movie? He was not, thankfully. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like this movie was just, there were so many moments of just jaw on the floor. The first time he drops his atomic breath, I lost that my. That was the coolest dude. fucking atomic breath oh, ever. Oh my God. Oh my. It was insane, man. At Oh, I wish we got it like three, four more times. That was fucking. I unreal. wish I, ha I wish I like got my reaction to that yeah. on video because the theater I went to an early screening. It was like oh, four yeah, o'clock. Awesome. So no, no, not an early screening, just like oh, early like time in the day. Oh, yeah, 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 just yeah, like yeah. it was like a four o'clock screening. I left work a little early. It wasn't that busy. I was like, let me just go watch this movie, get out of the way. That's awesome. So man. it was me and like one other dude, and like the entire time, I'm like, damn, I could, I should have brought my tripod and like recorded my reaction to this because I genuinely like, I, I unreclined my seat after that because I wanted mm -hmm. to like sit up and like look at the screen. That shit out of nowhere popped up which was just yeah. delightful and then i saw this um this tweet that i think kind of describes what minus one is like fairly well they were basically yeah. forgot what they said about act one but they basically said act one was some movie act two of jaws and then act three of dunkirk yeah, yeah. so it's 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 a uh... Uh, Jurassic Park, yeah, Jaws yeah, yeah. Dunkirk, yeah. And, which, which it is, man. yeah, yeah. Which I thought was just like the most brilliant way to describe this movie because I think that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this is in my top five of the year. I was just so stunned at so many moments. Um. I think they put uh, Tyler. If you can still hear us, you want to toss that spoiler warning on? Thank you. Um. What a guy. Yeah, I guess we're just going to spoilers now because there's fine one with thing. Me, man. There, they made it too obvious that there was an ejector seat in that plane yeah um, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah so that's so that's like, kind of like what held this back from a five star yeah. for me was that part because they wanted to make that like the really like big emotional sacrifice but i was like they made it so obvious that 
like they cut out the audio when he was talking about the plane they were yeah, like and yeah. then they go back that was so clear it was a little too obvious for me but still the whole final sequence was just just non-stop anxiety and panic and i was like wow this is like this is the godzilla movie that we've been waiting for it's like this perfect blend of like this kaiju destruction with these jaw-dropping moments and they also give us this this character in and i'm definitely gonna pronounce his name wrong koichi i believe his name was and like the guilt and the grief that he has from his experience in world war ii and how he's like yeah what the fuck they got like a godzilla with like a deeper meaning in it that like and and that's probably why i shouldn't write godzilla versus kong up yeah that four and a half is crazy this movie has like deeper meanings to it and it's actually like has a narrative um (laughs) on top of big ass godzilla destroying a bunch of shit um but yeah you're you're, you can continue a lot of guilt and shame no that's 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 pretty much my whole rant this is just like it was the best of both worlds because it's like it's what the the new monsterverse movies lack that human narrative the old Japanese movies, the ones that I have seen, have lacked that Godzilla terror outside of Shin Godzilla. I think Shin Godzilla was a very good blend of it, just not to the level of minus one. But everything prior to that, I think, just lacks Godzilla. Everything in the MonsterVerse lacks that human narrative, and at times even lacks Godzilla. I think the Gareth Edwards movie is like criminal how little godzilla there is in that movie yeah they really went for the jaws effect in that one. yeah which like, i just and, and did not too much like. people yeah too much people. too much people and then that you don't care about exactly especially. and then they tried to switch it up in king of the monsters where they tried to just give us kaiju fighting left and right and then they added Mill- millie bobby brown as like a little piece didn't like that that much um but yeah, this Man, was I like just Godzilla vs. Monsters. I love those movies. I'm an idiot. No, no, I like those movies a lot too. I think they're visually fantastic. And when when we have Godzilla and like Ghidorah fighting, it's cracked. It's it's incredible. Um, but there's just nothing for me to care about in those movies. And minus one just gave me that. I cared about characters yeah. for the first time in a Godzilla movie. I like that. No, I, I'm I'm with you, man. I, I fuck it. This is gonna be we're gonna call it ninety out of a hundred right now, <laughs> just because I'm gonna put it. Uh, that's a four and a half, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's fifth on my ratings for this year. Yeah, that's what um, it says for me. And it's it's. I think it's above Creed. I think it's above John Wick. Um, Ooh, uh, I got I got John Wick. Above I got it. okay. Yeah, I got John Wick at three, and then Past Lives at four, and then Godzilla at five. Yeah, I have uh, I have uh, Past Lives at four, and then Oppenheimer, Guardians, and Across the Spider Verse. So yeah, I think. Uh, I think this one can be my number uh, five, which I I really like this movie. I think it was awesome. Um, I think that it's fifteen million dollar budget, which is insane because it looks so good at parts. It's so are crazy. Parts, there are parts where it looks like rubbery and a little off, but like it's not a huge. It was the eyes. It was the it eyes was of the Godzilla. Eyes this was and my problem with Shin Godzilla 2. I know you, you should watch that, by the way. I, I it's will. a great movie. I do like Godzilla, so I got to watch more. Yeah, that's life. like another movie where it's like a good blend of like the human narrative and then Godzilla just being destructive. But like, yeah. I think Godzilla looks so goddamn goofy in that movie. Really? And I couldn't figure out what it was. And the more I watched that movie, like as the runtime went on, I was like, it's the eyes. Like Mm -hmm. the pupils are not moving. He's not blinking or anything. They're just, they're just there. And that was the same thing in minus one. I was like, it's the eyes, like the eyes just make him blink once. And I think that would add so much terror to his character. (laughs) Yeah, I'm with you. Definitely. The eyes, you're exactly right. We're the, we're the problem. Um, uh what what else was i gonna say oh i i think um also the way he walks is a little goofy but that's like that's like old timey godzilla so yeah. like, i think that's kind of what they were going for which is totally fine yeah. um a lot of people my, who have i've never seen the the 19 i believe it was 54 the first one ever but a lot of people that have are like putting in their letterbox reviews like i like that i like the ode to like older godzilla like with the way yeah. he like his he moves the way his arms are um yeah. i also saw a lot of letterbox reviews that like said why they made godzilla kind of thick in this movie <laughs> <laughs> they did kind of man he's not wrong it's not wrong 
Um, <laughs> one of my favorite letterbox reviews of the week, not for Godzilla, but for Napoleon. So Tyler, if you could hear is like, I can't wait to see uh, Sofia Coppola's version of v- Vanessa or, or, or not Vanessa, uh, um, whatever Vanessa Kirby's character plays. I haven't seen the movie, but I thought that was a funny letterbox review. Yeah. Back to Godzilla. Um, yeah, I, I think like the, the it, it's, it, it just shows how impressive it is that they can make a, a character driven Godzilla movie work and still have the big ass kaiju like Godzilla is all Godzilla is is just a um is a like representation of the atomic bomb that's a, that's all it is and in basically every and you don't get that at all in the US versions shocker there <laughs> um, sh- shocking Whoa. That the, yeah shocking that the US doesn't want to make this narrative that Godzilla is the atomic bomb um but it, it, like you said we see Godzilla originally he's kind of small on an island of Oda is it i believe um and then later in the movie you see the u.s testing atomic weapons and godzilla getting stronger and stronger a little bit bigger and then um he becomes a minesweeper the main character uh and they you know they're making a great family he he marries or he doesn't marry a woman he gets with a woman who has a kid but it's not i thought that was the funniest relationship i've (laughs) ever seen not weird it was just like i was like a little throw i was like Like they were they were living together for like five years and people Mm -hmm. were and like asking like oh your wife and he's like oh no 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 this is still just some random woman who just decided to live with me (laughs) yeah she she showed up like after the war um and this guy like who doesn't think he should have survived he was a kamikaze pilot who who lands on the island of oda and then wasn't supposed to survive the, the battle with godzilla and survives that and then he he's on that minesweeper ship when they first see godzilla survives that and so he's just got such survivor's guilt that every natural disaster he's the one making it out at one point his girlfriend who he's <laughs> living with um is uh dies or you think she dies um and and so he's has survivor's guilt for that and then uh his idea is that he can be a kamikaze pilot now um and fly right into godzilla's mouth and blow it up there um which it does work but like you said george very clearly they put an ejector and that was like another theme is that like japan refuses to put ejector seats in these planes uh then they did at the end um and, and it flies into it get a little tease at the end that Godzilla's still alive. I didn't I I don't know if it's canon that Godzilla has uh regeneration powers. I but he didn't does it think it was. Yeah, when he bites the 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 mine and his face yeah. grows I was like, oh okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought it was gonna be like another Godzilla like in <laughs> like in uh the Meg t- or the Meg where like the second there's like a bigger Meg one. Come, yeah I thought it was gonna be another Godzilla. Yeah I didn't or know he was just gonna like heal like in time or something. But no Godzilla just regenerate yeah because in every other godzilla movie he's just been indestructible like he's like yeah. like he, he got in godzilla vs kong he got hurt but like but like can go he heal. got he got back up every single time like it was yeah. more just like fatigue i guess in those movies this movie mm-hmm. half his face gets blown off and he just immediately grew back yeah exactly very very interesting yeah um not an issue by any means no no it. not an issue at all just like in the yeah, moment, just, I was like, "Oh, okay, uh, he does I, yeah, that now." <laughs> I didn't know that was like a I, yeah, yeah. I was sitting there, and I'm like, "Oh, didn't know that was a power he's got." <laughs> um, but just a cool ass movie, man. Overall, like we already mentioned, the atomic breath that he has in this is probably is without a doubt Dude, the best we'd ever seen. As soon as you see like scene. the spikes charging up, yeah, fucking awesome, the build up of that. Just, that was and so then cool. I love that it was like a literal bomb. It wasn't uh, yeah, just like no, the. Like you, it wasn't just like a laser breath like it usually is. Like this you was have a... that feeling of like this is like insane. It's like it shakes your entire theater and yeah. like then causes a major. It destroys like an entire city basically because just the power of it blows up. And then, like you said, it's an entire bomb where the wind is coming through. You can feel it. it's fucking awesome. Man. Yeah, it's I so I fun. need to like rewatch this in IMAX. Like, in yeah, because I, I only didn't... saw it in like a regular screening. Yeah, so did I. I, I didn't see it in IMAX or even like 4DX or anything. It was like yeah. such a like a just a it was like literally just a normal theater. <laughs> yeah, kind of um, bummed about that. But the the shot when like in the third act, when Godzilla is like charging himself up for the atomic breath. Mm-hmm. And like the camera is going around him, 
Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that shot, but I thought that was just the coolest thing. And there's, I, I, for the life of me, I can't remember what movie I remember that exact shot from, but like, I have that, like that style so vividly in my head of like just the camera circling Godzilla. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I've seen this before somewhere. And like, I remember just, it's like the coolest shot in the world. Cause like, it like literally, He's like powering himself up and then like the camera's going around him and getting closer to him as he's powering. So it just makes him look like this fucking menace. And then that's yeah. obviously right before he gets the kamikaze plane in his mouth and then dies. Yeah, that, that was just an awesome movie. And then it's it's revealed that the woman lived. Um, Which and- no way. Yeah, no, no shot. Man. Zero she got, chance. She got blown to she shit. She got man. blown into buildings that were yeah. falling yeah she got blown shit like even if she did uh, survive that no way also, they find he would have he would have died too like that building, yeah there's the no one building way, yeah he's behind is the one that's standing it's fine not a big deal but just funny just funny um, plot armor <laughs> yeah exactly um but yeah just really great movie uh four and a half out of five for george 90 out of 100 for myself uh also four and a half um but really Two thumbs up from Camo. Two thumbs up. Um, just very fun. Tyler, we can get back into uh, May, December if you're there. And I can pull up the synopsis. Yeah, George well. shot with me too. I saw uh-huh. it as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot yep. you did. So we all three saw in May, December, uh, 20 years after their notorious tabloid romance, a married couple buckle under the pressure when a Hollywood actress meets them to do research for a film about their past life, uh, directed by Todd Hayes starring uh natalie portman as well as um charles melton i believe his name is julianne moore um and then those are the main notable actors um in this but good movie uh tyler you gave your your review like a couple weeks ago i think george i think you spoke about it when you first saw it but we'll start with george um what'd you think about this one what do you have it rated oh yeah i i said to tyler yesterday when we were talking i wish i had re-watched this prior to to this episode because i feel like this is like for me this is the most like shocking like all of a sudden oscar contender like i i out of the theater thought um uh natalie portman was gonna get all the buzz and i thought that was gonna be it um and i think she was great she was was fantastic that that whole monologue she has at the end is just that was that's like her oscar clip like i could see Mm -hmm. it already you know natalie portman may december and then they play that clip um, I think my problem with this movie was this was the first film I saw at the film festival. Um, so right after that, I had another 12 releases in the span of two weeks. So I think this is just the movie that just kind of went in one ear out the other, especially because I thought so highly of, you know, Hitman and uh, The Killer and, um, you know, The Boy and the Heron. I just found these movies just a little bit more intriguing than May, December. So for me, May, December kind of felt like that one movie from the film festival. I just kind of went in one ear, out the other, because it was the first one I watched. Um, and then I just had to focus so heavy on like so many other new releases that I was getting to at the film festival, which again, so I think my thoughts are a bit disingenuous. So I kind of wish I had rewatched it, but I thought it was good. I definitely thought it was fantastic. Again, I'm still surprised by the Oscar buzz. I think it's a very interesting look at sexual abuse. Um, And then Charles Melton's character kind of growing up in this household as this father figure um, where he just doesn't have a real grasp of the world or of adulthood kind of because of his experiences, which I thought really did make for a compelling narrative. Um, I think there are a lot of moments with Charles Melton's character and his children that just kind of are just devastating just because of what Julianne Moore's character did to Charles Melton. Um, I think Natalie Portman was fantastic. Um, Surprisingly, and I seem to be the only one on this side of, and I'd be curious to hear your guys' thoughts. I did not care for like the soap opera esque, like drama in this movie, like the scene where Julianne Moore opens the fridge and there's like the really intense music and she's like, oh, we're, we may not have enough hot dogs. Like, I didn't find that funny. I just, I don't care for like soap opera y style of, you know, film, which if you like that, all the power to you. It's just not my thing. So I don't think the comedy in this worked as well as I would have liked. It's definitely dry, which surprisingly, I typically love dry humor, but 
this movie it just didn't work for me but i don't also don't think it's necessarily like that was its strong suit i think it's narrative between and it's and it's i guess rivalry of of julianne moore and uh natalie portman's character is its standout as well as charles melton's just heartbreaking performance and and his character is just like weird situation um so my score right now stands at a three and a half out of five um i i need to rewatch it i think before the end of the year especially just because of how much oscar buzz it's getting and i need to like rework my 2023 ranked list because i feel like i don't know i don't even think it's in my top 40 right now or top 30 maybe um and i just i guess i feel like a fraud um but yeah that that's about where i stand with may december i definitely thought it was good but i think just the fact that i had to watch 12 other film festival releases right after just made that just the most forgettable one unfortunately yeah um tyler i think you gave most of your thoughts last yeah i want to hear your thoughts cam yeah i'll uh mention my i really enjoyed it uh, i think i'm lower on it than tyler i think i have it around a f- I, t- I told you guys before we recorded or maybe i said it when we were recording i don't know where i was at uh with this or godzilla i didn't have either of them rated so i'm gonna throw like an 82 or around there four out of five um i liked it about as much as i liked air which is about around there um i think it was really great through and through there were some moments that i didn't Um, necessarily love or necessarily care for as much i think charles melton was fantastic definitely best supporting actor worthy i'll still give it to rdj just because he's my guy i gotta go with gotta go with him but i think i i do think they have like neck and neck performances um uh, natalie portman for me was the best of the two lead actresses uh which i don't know if that's a common take or a hot take i don't know but i i think she was fantastic in this um the uh, it's been going around Twitter this week, the like clip of who this is like loosely based on doing an interview with basically the exact scene. That's like who was in charge um, when he was a 13 year old kid is <laughs> fucking insanity, man. That that scene is probably one of the best of the year, in my opinion. Um, and then also seeing the like interview that these people had uh, after the fact is just fucking insanity. Um, in insane look into like sexual assault and like how this kid how this guy is just basically a kid still because he was never able to like emotionally grow up at all he had to like basically turn on adulthood right at 12 or 13 whatever age he was um and then like i think what what did she say she's uh Oh, I can't remember exactly what she says, but she basically says that she's naive. I think it is. And she's been naive her whole life. And that's kind of what makes her work. Julianne Moore's character, that is. And just, a f- I don't know, man, the whole time I'm watching this thing, I was like, this is so fucked up this entire. And I think that's obviously the point, but it was just like such an odd watch. I think this was a harder watch than like a lot of movies that are just gross and grotesque, but this is just like gross in a different way. Um, and then, like I said, seeing that it's based on like loosely based on a real story is just gross even more. Um, I will say I did watch this after uh, I after the Purdue game. So maybe I'm not giving it as much respect as I <laughs> as I should as I was just like defeated. Um, but, yeah, those are my general thoughts. Um, not a whole lot of spoilers to get into. Um, but Tyler, you can give your overarching thoughts. I know you already have kind of and then. Um, we can do some spoilers afterwards. Yeah, I'll just put up the spoilers now since I kind of already gave yeah, my like, non-spoiler yeah. thought, like uh, whatever it was two weeks ago, three weeks ago. But um, yeah, May, December, I don't know. I was surprised at how much I did end up liking this. And I'll say something that George said. The 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 kind of soap opera aspect of it, the black comedy aspect of it, because this is cl- cl- categorized you know, as a black comedy, which a lot of people... I think like we're like, disagreeing with on Twitter, but I was like, I don't know. Like clearly there's a lot of like intentionally satirical comedic moments. Comedy doesn't have to, comedy doesn't mean it's lighthearted and funny and that you shouldn't take it seriously. Comedy can be devastating like it is in this. Um, but the soap opera moments definitely took me, didn't take, well, I wouldn't say they took me out of it, but they took me by surprise. I was not expecting that because I was in a mm-hmm. theater um, and I, I was like, whoa, like I was, <laughs> that that was kind of out of nowhere. And I kind of wondered because the first time it hits is probably five ish minutes and the hot dog scene is very early on in the movie. So you're kind of wondering like, okay, is this going to be the whole rest of the movie? They do use it pretty few and far between, which I enjoy it. I, I, I didn't, I see what they were going for, I guess, but I, I didn't love that aspect of it. Um, 
so just kind of want to touch on that but this movie is just devastating man like natalie portman's turn as she goes through this chess match with julianne moore throughout this movie of just trying to figure out what makes her tick but at the same time julianne moore you think is this naive woman who's kind of just laying it all out there and you're like wow wow this woman's crazy which she is she's like crazy she's disgusting and gross but you kind of just think she's just like this rich privileged woman who's just letting it all out there but then you kind of realize as the movie goes on you know she's being very calculated about what she's showing and what she's telling and what she's revealing to natalie portman so it's kind of just this game of what's being revealed what's not being revealed um natalie portman making daniel day lewis look like a basic bitch when it comes to method acting like she she goes all the way to hmm. freaking level 12 out of 10 charles melton i loved right out of the theater i was like yeah, if he won best supporting actor i'd be happy about it um i don't really know what they do with the two leads i think they're both great but like I, I don't know how you can make one supporting and one lead like they, they both got to be leads like because they're kind of like both i don't know if you had to pick one i'd probably say natalie portman's the lead since we kind of view the movie through her eyes but yeah it's gonna be weird what they end up doing for nomination wise but i thought the acting in this all around was great, especially the kids. I loved the rooftop scene of uh, the kids smoking weed with his dad. And, mm -hmm. you know, I love the line, like, am I, am I creating or are we bonding right now? Or am I just creating a bad memory for you? I thought that was really great. Uh, I thought the final scene of this movie was so heartbreak. Well, not the final scene. It's like the second to last scene. It was so heartbreaking at the graduation ceremony where Charles Melton's kids graduate and you basically realize they are now – mentally and emotionally more mature than he is and have basically mm. passed him in age which is just so devastating to see i just thought he was so good in this i saw i saw that it said he gained like 20 pounds or 30 pounds to this role if i could gain 30 pounds and still look like that i yeah, would dude, give, i would give my left nut for that <laughs> like like i swear like how like how was he he wasn't a twig before this like there, no dude i was like, looking at pictures of him and i'm like this dude's got a nice jaw jaw yeah and he still had a nice jawline in this movie like how do yeah, you even put on how do you put on 40 pounds and still look like <laughs> like that good i was like I was like screw you man like you're, you're too good looking but uh yeah this movie was just such a sick look at not only grooming culture and sexual assault but the glorification of the grotesque in the world today with movies being made about stuff that's crazy that happens obviously a big thing in, in the world is true crime right now and it's also becoming a big thing to critique true crime podcasts and true crime tv shows and movies mm -hmm. because you know what do they do like the craziest murder or sexual assault or the craziest most gross thing ever in the world happens and what do you do you immediately rush to talk about it for two hours and and have sponsors and and ads and get money off of it and get views off it and this is definitely another look at that as well because Natalie Portman is trying to make a movie about this woman who's doing something just despicable. Um, I think there's a lot of racial undertones in this movie as well, where they live in an affluent white community and Charles Melton comes from the one Asian family that uh, in the community, I think uh, that's definitely intentional as well. And it's just wild to see how they're all just living happy, like, you know, quote unquote happy in terms of that community, because the community kind of just accepted them at this point. It's been what, like 20 years they've been together. So they were yeah. all kind of like, yeah, they're the weird family. Um, it's just normal at this point. We don't think much of it when obviously it's very far from normal. And I think it's just a good analysis of society of how we treat, you know, group. Like there's so many relationships that go on that you kind of, they kind of last for so long. You stop, don't look at, you know, how wrong it might end up being. Like there's plenty that film Twitter always talks about. I think the big one is like Aaron Taylor Johnson. Yeah, know? I saw that. We feel a lot about but it. it's been going on you know for so long you kind of just like are like oh it's normal like they're they're an exception but like are they like you just never really know and that's kind of this movie just a fascinating look at that um yeah like there's just so many devastating moments in this movie the, the, the most has to be for me when she says like this is just what grown-ups do to charles melton like yeah man just like crushing this dude who's <laughs> emotionally the age of like 14 or 15 years old and like she's just using him and uh, it's just uh, one thing i kind of want to get your guys interpretation on if you remember george i know it's been probably a month or more for you and cam i know you watched it you know late last night or ever um but like the end see, like so the one thing i still don't know which i think i want to rewatch to understand is so julianne moore has a son yeah and basically they never like you kind of get the idea that he's a, a strange son they never talk they never see each other but then at the end he kind of is like they tells be. natalie portman he's like we actually talk every day we're like best buds like i i don't know what to take she away reveals from that. that right 
Like Julianne Moore reveals that to Natalie. Right. Yeah. Julianne Moore reveals yeah, that. And then she, I think the son I, says something to Natalie Portman on the bench before that, that like adds confusion to the relationship. Yeah, I kind of took that as just like, like you said, Tyler, and I said it earlier where she, she is naive or says she's naive, but like she knows it. Um, and then you said like, she's actually very calculated and, and just kind of a, like, she's very methodical and just like, she, she probably knows she's doing the shitty thing, but like she wants it to happen and she's going to make it happen no matter what. And she like plays everyone else like a puppet basically. And like you said, lives on this Island where everyone's kind of accepted it at this point. And she's almost manipulated them to make it seem like it's been accepted. And she's almost like manipulated Natalie Portman to make her make Natalie Portman think she's naive. Um, and then she's actually got this much more methodical thinking and she's, good friend good, or not good friends but like talks to her son every day who by the way um played by shit i looked at charles melton's filmography so i'm off the screen played by Corey michael smith uh the riddler from gotham it's the first time i've ever seen him in anything else so yeah hell yeah you <laughs> um but yeah i think it's more just like she's had this methodical like planning of life this entire time and she's planned out every moment after prison and knows how she's gonna skate by like inviting inviting a an actress to your life even though like you've done this crazy thing is is absurd in the first place but i think that kind of is the reveal that like she knew what she was doing the whole time and was fine with this actress coming onto onto the island and, and seeing them mm -hmm. it's kind of what i took away if that's I, thought, an answer. I thought the final the very last scene was so funny how like she goes through all this effort to be this method actress and ends up being like <laughs> like it just looks like a soap opera it's like, like a lifetime, lifetime movie <laughs> yeah yeah Cause I, and i didn't remember this but i saw someone tweet it so they said like i think one of the movies that natalie portman's character was in was nora's arc or something so clearly she's like probably a very c-tier actress is in these like spaghetti movies that aren't aren't that great but like she's treating her like life as if she's the most serious like the daniel day lewis of her society but she ends up being in just the most like cheesy corny basic movies ever and uh, she goes through all this crazy psychotic effort just to be in a movie that looks like it's, you know, $20,000 <laughs> production that's going to be on, you know, Hallmark or like True mm -hmm. TV or something like never going to even make a theatrical release. So I thought that was just like a, a funny way to end it. And the ending also, someone made this comparison. Um, it reminded me a lot of blowouts ending we talked about, you know, where it's kind of like you're you go through all this and you kind of have to deal with all the torture you just put yourself through in order to get to where you are. And that's kind of Natalie Portman kind of similar to then to blow out where he you know he goes through all that to get those screams and he's just hearing it in the movie over and over but uh, i think natalie portman's a lot less remorse or less remorseful than john travolta would be but i was surprised how much i like this honestly i'll be interested to see how it goes throughout award season i feel like every year we see movies that ha pick up a, pick a momentum then lose momentum and then movies will come out of nowhere still and i'm sure like the golden globes will throw a big wrench into things like it's always fun to track those things uh, I think a lot of people talked about Barbarian last year, how casting uh, Bill Skarsgård, is that the one who plays Pennywise? Is it Bill? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Casting him was such a great idea because you think like, oh, he's like the villain because he's, you know, played this villain, villainous guy. <laughs> I think Charles Melton's just as spirited as a casting decision. Like obviously everyone only knows him from Riverdale. So in your mind, you associate him with a teen who's not really an adult, makes dumb little kid decisions. And so putting him in the movie like this, where he's a full fledged adult with kids that are, graduating high school is just like it's a great juxtaposition for the audience to see that and really kind of help hammer home the point they're trying to make mm -hmm. um also writing credit this is the first written movie by these two writers so the two writers were alex Me alex mechanic and sammy birch um so alex mechanic has no other writing credits cr cr credits <laughs> sammy birch only has one other one and that only other act writing credit is Coyote vs. Acme, the movie that was scrapped by Max. Oh, so interesting. excited to see it now. This is a, this is all she's made. But this movie yeah. was written like four years ago. I just found out about something called The Blacklist. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that. It's for You've never heard of The Blacklist? <laughs> not, the, I'm not talking about the TV show. I'm talking oh, about okay. Sorry. <laughs> for people in the like... industry. 
I don't know if if you play sports growing up in America, you know what huddle is, is where you like put your film mm-hmm. tape and then coaches can look at it when they're scouting you. It's That's kind it. of the film version of that. Like the screenplay was put on there in 2020 and basically producers in the industry have to pay like $50 to read it. Like people can put their screenplay up there and people in the industry have to pay to read these screenplays. But it's kind of like where you put your stuff. You're like, Hey, got the screenplay out here. People in the industry pay money and they can read it and then be like, yeah, we want to pick you up. So four years ago, this was put on the blacklist. Um, but I just found out about that. It's like the huddle version for people yeah. in the industry to just put up their tape in like a serious way for people in the industry. I think the reason the only like fifty dollars is so minor cost for people in the industry, but I feel like the only people they person they the reason they do that is because they don't just want every average Joe just to go on there and be like, Yeah, look at my acting tape, man. Like yeah. <laughs> it's gotta be more serious than that. But yeah, I've rambled about this movie too long. I had a blast with it. Um yeah, we'll see what comes of it but uh right yeah. now it's definitely seeing his time in the spotlight i do think i do think it'll win my guess <clears> that <throat> at least two oscars for something whether it's writing i can't acting, think of anything else for original screenplay that would I, be yeah compete. i don't because adapted is the stacked one this does year. does this like, count as adapted if it's based on a true story i know it's not, it's not book, fully based yeah, yeah i, know. I think, this yeah, I think it's just, if you steal something from an interview i feel like you gotta make it i feel like it's gotta be adapted but um but like no, oppenheimer think, killers oh, the and barbie lives. those are all adapted it's you know, past lives so yeah i feel like past lives and may december yeah, probably the two past big lives they're gonna be yeah, two big original ones. ones or anatomy of a fall depending on how much steam that gets going into that. Oscar season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen that one yet, but I, I've heard nothing but good things. Um, okay. That, yeah. That, that's our review of May, December. So four and a half out of five from, um, from Tyler, uh, 82 ish out of a hundred for me, by the time this goes up, I'll have everything on letterbox to <laughs> see what I actually rate everything. Um, and then a three and a half out of five for, for George. But I think we all enjoyed May, December moving on now. Um, we're done with movies. Oh, best Christmas ever is ass crack and should never <laughs> be watched by anyone. It's really bad. Um, but yeah, that's the okay. Now we're done with movies. Um, trailers though. George Furiosa came out. Yeah. I know you're amped. I know you're pumped. Um, what are what are your thoughts on Furiosa? Yeah, that was like the most. I got, I posted my trailer reaction after I posted mm-hmm. my trailer reaction for the last Airbender and for. Uh, Furiosa, I got so many Instagram DMs, people being like, dude, that was the most animated I'd ever seen you for a trailer reaction. <laughs> and it's like, it's just a couple of smiles throughout the trailer reaction. It's not even that much. Um, yeah, I'm I'm so, so excited. I mean, I've logged Fury Road, I think, eight times on Letterboxd, but I've seen it. If I had Letterboxd maybe a year or two earlier, it would have it would probably be at like 20 logs right now. Um, it's maybe my favorite action movie of all time. I, I absolutely love that this, this post-apocalyptic world that George Miller has built. Um, and I, I saw a tweet that said, are, are George Miller and James Cameron, the only like two blockbuster filmmakers working that are like still in charge of their franchises? Um, obviously being Avatar and, and the, the, the Mad Max franchise, um, which I think is awesome, even though I don't love the Avatar movies. Um, I think it's awesome that George Miller still like has this passion towards this this universe, and he still wants to make these movies. And he's not phoning it in by any means, obviously. I think Fury Road is top 20 all time. Um, I think that's one of the greatest action movies ever made. So I'm really excited. I think the trailer looked absolutely dynamite. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy just looks perfect for the role of Furiosa. This feels like a significantly more physical role than she's had in the past. Um, so I'm really excited to see like the physicality of this role that, 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 um, that it demands. And then Chris Hemsworth, I think this is just like, I don't know. This plays into like his Australian side of life just so well, I think. And I think this is just going to be such a, a, I did not know he was in this movie until the trailer came out. To be quite honest, with really? You. I didn't either, honestly, I, I, yeah, I didn't. Oh, like, this, I, the, there was there was he missed the press tour for something. The strike. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, it was because he was in Australia filming this movie. I forgot what he missed it for. Um, but that's I had I didn't know like originally that he was in this movie until I saw that news that was like Chris Hemsworth won't attend these press tours because he's out filming in in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, I did uh, not Furiosa. realize he was in this movie. Um, everyone on Twitter keeps like complaining about the CGI. Go back and watch the Fury Road trailer. They look the exact same, like digitally. Um, and I, 
I don't know that of of everything to critique from the Mad Max saga. I think the CGI is just like the laziest thing to do because mm. just go watch Fury Road, go watch Mad Max Two. Like these movies take place decades apart, and they both look just brilliant. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really really excited for Furiosa. I love the Fury Road. I love the 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 practical effects of everything. Uh, and this trailer just looked just banging. I watched it 400 times since its release already. It just looks so goddamn good. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think it looks fantastic. I love, I I love Mad Max. It's so good. I gotta rewatch it. Uh, I, I've seen. I think I've seen it twice, but each time I watch it, I'm like, this is fantastic. I gotta rewatch it. I haven't seen it in a while. I think Anya Taylor, Anya Taylor Joy is one of the best working actresses right now, so it can't can't go wrong from that aspect. Um, I'm interested to see Chris Hemsworth like not in a Thor movie or a uh, or a uh, extraction uh, extraction movie. I, I feel like that those are the only movies I've ever seen him in. Um, but it, it, I think it'll be good. I'm I'm very excited for it. Um, but I, I don't have much more than you, George Tyler. Anything? Yeah, just I, I don't know. It's just I, I don't know what Psycho with Teeth you did to Chris Hemsworth, but I, he's just poisoned in my brain. Where like I'm, I'm hoping he's gonna be good in this. I think it will be, but in my mind, I just see like the Thor: Love and Thunder, Thor: Ragnarok, Thor. I'm not saying Thor: Ragnarok's a bad movie. I'm just saying like Ragnarok's his great. comedic personality. I'm like, how will this work? And it looks like he's gonna have a little flair to him. And I in think he's pretty guy. funny, funny guy. Like, right, but I don't know. It's just like it's I just gonna be hard for me to detach him from like the latest we've seen from Thor. Mm-hmm. I still think I'm, I'm excited to see him, but I saw him in the trailer. I'm like, this is giving me Thor love and thunder vibes. Like when I saw him, I'm like, which isn't good, but the like, not the movie itself. I think Fear also looks great. Anya Taylor joy. I think is going to crush this. I can't wait mm-hmm. for a uh, way to see her in this. I need to rewatch Fear road. It's been a while. I think we all agreed before the pod that we don't know if our significant others would like it or not. We don't really think they would, but I might, I might get make Riley, uh, give it a try. We'll see how it goes, but beautiful movie. I think this movie is going to be just as beautiful. Um, this is not the first or the last time we've seen unfinished CG in a trailer. So, yeah. Yep. Furious is going to bang, though. When does it come out? Like March 2024? Yeah. Uh, Dude, yeah. We're, getting, we're getting Dune and Furiosa in like, not even like maybe a week apart, I think, or two weeks That's apart. crazy. I think it. This might have like release with like three other movies. I can't remember, but I think it has big release date, um, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I saw that wrong, but I, I yeah, I think most of us are very excited. I know Seth's excited. Looks great. Um, yeah. Expecting expecting very big things from this. Moving on, did we? I I might have missed this one. Did we get a Rebel Moon part part one? Uh, new trailer this week. All right, I missed that one. George, mm-hmm. give your thoughts uh i mean the, yeah there's there's not much like it's still rebel moon yeah it's still rebel moon there's not much more to it than the, the the first main trailer that we had gotten which was like a trailer for both parts um it just kind of shows off more so just like Zack snyder's style mm-hmm. um which obviously turn a lot of people yeah. off turn a lot of people on kind of depends what side of the road you sit on with Zack snyder um i'm seeing a lot of reviews already like early reviews yeah. that say like I've seen that this is the most Zack Snyder, Zack Snyder-y movie you could imagine. So, like, if you don't like his style, if you don't like his darkness, if you don't like his his slow-mo or any of that stuff, you're not going to like this movie. But if you buy into Zack Snyder's, um, you know, vision of, like, what he sees as this Star Wars epic, then I think you're going to like it. Um, so I'm pretty excited. I'm hoping I can get to a theater before it releases on Netflix because I believe it releases theatrically on the 15th and then on Netflix the 22nd. Um, so um, I'd be I'd be very curious to see like the box office numbers. I feel like most people are just gonna wait for the Netflix release since it's only like a week apart. Mm-hmm. I I will probably wait for the Netflix release. Sorry. <laughs> apparently, it's connected to like the Army of the Dead universe. I didn't really know that, but they're apparently in the same universe. That's such bullshit. Yeah, that's I've seen that dude. That's no such way. bullshit. They're on different. <laughs> you can say anything when you're out. Yeah, space. You'd be like, yeah, it's connected to that. Fuck <laughs> off, yeah. Zach. That's like God saying all of Jordan theory. Peele's movies are in the same universe. Like, okay. Don't they're people all... say that, though? Or yeah, people crazy? say it all the time. Yeah. yeah I just think it's the Earth. biggest bullshit. They're yeah, because they're like all just on Earth. Places on Earth, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, Tyler, anything? No, nah, nothing else. I, I don't know. I, I think it'll be like a 3.5 out of 5. Right? Nah, I'm not really... 5 out of 5. Out of five. 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 This this about to sweep <laughs> in the uh, Oppenheimer. Better watch out. This about to pick up all the Oscars. <laughs> all the technical Oscars. They're lucky yeah. I'm not in the Academy. I'd be voting for Rebel Moon for everything. <laughs> <laughs> of course. All right. Uh, moving on. Next next movie or trailer, not movie. I guess. Uh, Ted. 
the poop and this TV show. I, I think I laughed at like one. I didn't laugh once. That looked yeah. so bad. There's like a yeah. There's like a jerking off joke or something that made me laugh. I, think that's, <laughs> that's about it. Um, I might watch it though. I don't know. Like I did feel like my throat on the thing. I I don't love Mark Wahlberg, so maybe without him, it might actually be better. Honestly, yeah. I'm not a huge Mark Wahlberg guy either, but I I don't know. I don't hate him. I guess. Um, I, I actually do. I actually I take that back. I think I do like him a good now in most things, not everything. I think I saw he has a movie coming out like the end of this month that looks yeah, it's like garbage. A, wait, wait, wait. Is that the dog one or is that a different one? I don't oh, know. I God. thought I just saw his face. The on dog the one I'm too. excited for because it's a dog. Okay. <laughs> Maybe know. it was that one. Yeah. But, hell yeah. But yeah. Mark Wahlberg, whatever. But Ted, I don't know. I'm going to watch it. I, I didn't can't remember where I ranked Ted 1 and Ted 2. I think I know one of them I, I liked and then the other one I didn't like. I think it's Ted 1 I liked, Ted 2 I didn't like. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes without Mark Wahlberg. Seth MacFarlane just works for me. Like his accents just like work for me. I enjoy them. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's funny in a lot of things, but uh, I don't know if I love Ted. I think they're fine. Um, the second one is only good for that uh, stand-up comedy bit. I think that that clip goes viral <laughs> once a week. Yeah, it's hilarious. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's always only, funny. <laughs> it's the only funny part. Of that it is thing. never not that and yeah, the the F Scott that, Fitzgerald scene. I don't even like that one. Oh, I think that's I hilarious. That funny, I see I, that one on on uh, on TikTok literally like once a week, and I just laugh every single time. That's fair. It's like, well, why'd uh, you say fuck him? What? Yeah. <laughs> and that they also get rid of Mila Kunis in that one, or maybe she. I don't yeah, know, poor I don't choice. Know what um, but yeah, I, who cares? I don't know. <laughs> enjoy it, enjoy it, Tyler. I'm not going to be watching this. One. <laughs> uh, the Fallout series coming to Prime. Any any opinions on this? Did you play the video game? I did not. Um, I, 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 never did. I wonder if Seth did because he's a big big video game guy. Yeah, but... he is. I wonder if he did. I don't even. There were always games was. that looked appealing to me. Like the Fallout games always looked like I was like, if I liked video games, that seems like a fun open world like game to get into. But I'm just not mm. a gaming guy. Yeah. Um. But the the show. I know I have friends like in my friend group chat that like played Fallout and are excited for the show and they're really hyped up by the trailer so okay. if you're uh listening to this and you're a fan of the show or a fan of the game and saw the trailer let us know what you think because at least from my world my small view of it uh, it seems like the people i know that are fans of it are excited for the show and think it looks good whereas like shows like halo just got approved for season two where i know fans of halo did not like that show so video game adaptations are always sketchy but i think uh, it's looking promising for people fans of fallout at least so far but that's really all i have Mm-hmm. I saw a good reaction to it online. I just, I, I, like I said, I haven't played the game, so I'm not right. 100% certain if it's for me, I don't even know if I'm going to watch it. Um, but I think it'll, it'll bring in numbers. I'm sure just cause there, it is such a massive game. Um, uh, anything else, George? I didn't watch the trailer. Never played Perfect. fallout. I didn't even know it was a video game until like, you know, last night. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Um, and then house of the dragon season two, which I think we're all excited for. Uh, when is that release again? March? No, summer. Oh. Summer oh, 2024. No. Hell yeah. We'll see because they they filmed throughout the whole actors and writers strike, so we'll see how that goes. Yep, they were non they were or, well, they given an exemption or yeah. non struck or something like that. Um how are they non struck? Isn't this well a, they most certainly weren't non struck, but I think it was because it was overseas. Uh, it's, it's got it's got some it had some bullshit. There was something they, weird. Yeah, they were able to able to record. Uh early summer twenty twenty four is all that's been released for it. Uh, I think it looks awesome. Uh for those that have read the book probably know what's coming. I have not. Uh, I'm not a source material guy, it seems, because I haven't <laughs> seen any of these source materials things. But um, um, I, I think it looks really, really fantastic. Um, that shot of Rhaenyra and Alicent on their dragons on the beach staring mm-hmm. at each other, that goes, yep. that went crazy. Dude, the shot, the, the big-ass dragon yeah. that flies by. <laughs> yeah. No offense to that dragon, it kind of looks like it's struggling to get off the <laughs> get off the ground, man. It's I little, think it's too big for its Too chunky, good. too chunky. Yeah, but that... <laughs> I think that looks awesome. Uh, Matt Smith, what's his character's name? The uh, Damon. Damon, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his big ass dragon. Damon. Right? No, I thought that was Aegon's dragon. I thought he had that one. No, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he kills the kid with it. Yeah, Aegon know. does, not Damon. Oh, was that not Damon? No, 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 no. Aegon, Allison's oh, son. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. I gotta. I'll rewatch uh, House of the Dragon season one before going to season two because I, I don't remember it enough. Um, but I think it looks really good. News, 
Jordan Peele, next horror film, and Robert Eggers, Nosferatu, both set to release on Christmas Day, 2024. Uh, Tyler, you said it yourself. Um, Mr. Good uh, Ari Aster needs to needs to book the date. Have it a three-peat three peat day um, uh, would be good fun, but for now, that's That'd really be an absurd triple feature. That'd be crazy. That'd, That'd be, be crazy. A crazy, especially to leave like a Thanksgiving dinner to go for a Peele, Eggers, Christmas, Aster. Christmas dinner. Christmas dinner, my bad. Yeah, you're good. Uh, your your mind would be messed up for a week. Yeah. At least. <laughs> um, but yeah, like like we said, looks awesome. Or, or wait, I I I just black blinked out there and ignore me. Just I got distracted and just <laughs> said my normal bullshit. Um, but that should be something. Sebastian Stan cast is Donald Trump in The Apprentice. Uh, I believe. Um, what's his name from? The session also was cast. Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy Strong. Strong. Jeremy Strong was also cast in that. So, I don't, I don't, I don't know what this is. Sure, good for you, Sebastian Stan. We'll see how how well he does. But um, did anyone see Tommy and Pam? Yeah, Pam, I did. Pam and Tommy. Yeah, is he good in that? He's very good in that. Yeah, he's yeah, really good. I thought good. He, he's he, a really great actor. Like he when really you, is. When you pull out, when you pull back on it, like the fact that he's you know the Winter Soldier and in Marvel, he's really great in a lot of things. I think thought it was fantastic for Fresh. Um, so I, I, I expect him to do well. Uh, Bradley Cooper says he would rather see the Eagles win the Super Bowl this year than win an Oscar for Best Actor, Best uh, Director, Carrie Mulligan, Best Actress, all of those. Hey, true guy's guy. Not there. true. A true guy's he's, guy right there. No, he's lying. Um, he's lying to all of our faces because he doesn't want to sound arrogant. I don't know. I think maybe he got, he spends like all his time guy. at those Eagles games. He, mm, he's Eagles people from guy. Philly are crazy. That's, yeah, that's something that's for sure. People from he, Philly he are did wild. follow it up with saying I'm sick. So yeah, I yeah. He's like, I'm, <laughs> I'm sick. sick of I'm head. sick of the head. I just don't <laughs> yeah. buy it. Like I just don't. Like, like this is his passion project. Like there's no way. <laughs> I don't know. Well, man. I mean, the Super Bowl will happen before the Oscars, so he can put his money where his mouth is. And if the Eagles win the Super Bowl and they give him the Oscar, he should go up on stage and be like, I decline this Oscar. Whoever was <laughs> second place, please take it. Same thing yeah. with Kerry Mulligan. He has to pull a Kanye West moment if Kerry Mulligan wins and go up and be like, Kerry, I'm sorry, but you don't. <laughs> you don't get this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Natalie Portman had the best acting performance all year. <laughs> Cut the stage. <laughs> That'd be, that'd be crazy that'd be yeah. awesome. i want i want another like chris rock will smith moment this year just not yeah, a not a something. not domestic violence or not abuse or assault but just something something like crazy. i want someone to truly like stand up mid-speech and be like you don't deserve it or something <laughs> like that that'd be awesome i would love that um moving on uh george santos movie uh coming from the veep creators George, the New York guy, what are your thoughts on this one? It's just crazy how fast they are on top of this shit. Right before the pod, one of you mentioned the, the GameStop movie where like they, they announced the GameStop movie before that situation even fucking ended. This this is like still brewing. Like George Santos just got removed from Congress, what, like two days ago, not even? Mm -hmm. Or yesterday? But I think that's needed because like like I, I think we I've said this before. Um like what's his name mr beast his squid games came out like two months after yeah. the squid game show at a good time this squid game sh uh reality show aside from all the bad things i guess that it would like went on during it it's just out like squid games was two three years ago at this point it's not relevant anymore i don't care for this reality show so i kind of i'm okay with them jumping on it it's still going to be made in like two years it's yeah. not going to be a quick turnaround but i mm. i would love I, I it's going to be one of those things like when it comes out we're going to think man that was a while ago a, a million bad things have happened in the world since <laughs> right, and i've yeah. just like forgotten about this one dude who <laughs> used money for only fans like i forgot <laughs> about this guy uh, it's like the same thing as the the purge movies honestly since i just rewatched that franchise like after the purge <sighs> 2 i think it just fully becomes a the movie just fully become copying exactly what's happened in the political climate like the yeah. whole donald trump election and the whole like seizing the the capital like the purge basically just anytime anything crazy happened with the whole donald trump administration they're like perfect that's the script for the next movie <laughs> this is so our it's just like yeah nowadays like anything that happens people just have to jump on immediately but it's just funny because that's kind of like the whole may december thing of it too where it's just like something crazy happens in the world and the first thing like all the producers do is you know call the call their bank and just say like all right we gotta throw money at this let's throw money at this fast before anything even happens yeah, the Veep, Veep creators got to assume it'll be pretty damn good. Um, 
I, I've heard nothing but good things about that show. But uh, Bradley Cooper says he would do a Hangover Four in an instant. Love do you it. guys want this? I don't Love care it. for the Hangover franchise as much as you guys, I think. But um, is this something you would see? First one is an all timer. Second one is just rinse and repeat. So it's nothing great. Third one terrible but i would love a fourth one like mm -hmm. i don't know why i just would they're, i just think they're so funny like no matter how bad the thing the third one is i think it's still a fucking hilarious movie yeah because zach alfanakis really hasn't escaped the comedic role that he was in in that and then ed helms and bradley cooper are still very active yeah. in the acting community so it's not like any of them would have to dust off the acting chops at all they just gotta just gotta sign the contract and they'd Literally. be good and just pl they yeah. play themselves in these movies anyway <laughs> Yeah, I have no clue what the plot could be or what you're going to go for there. Uh, I know Todd, who wasn't Todd Phillips the one who made those movies, yeah. and he's, he's doing Joker, so maybe after Joker 2 comes out, maybe you can get on the phone with Bradley Cooper. But, Such uh, a wild film. I'll, I'll never not marvel at his filmography. It includes The Hangover. Um, what's that old raunchy comedy that he did? Accepted, maybe? Or something? Who? Todd Phillips. Oh, I don't. He did like an old raunchy know. comedy, and then he did War Dog. Old school. Old Maybe school. Old yeah, school. he did old school. Um, and then he did War, War Dog stinks. Oh, stop it! War, oh, War Dog is awesome. War Dog is no, awesome. You're bugging. Oh my I'm god. I'm anti War Dogs. Okay, man. <laughs> I bet he did. And now he's buddy. doing Joker. Joker. Well, yeah, Bud. Chief. <laughs> Pal. Good one. <laughs> Cam hates Anadar. Must confirmed. <laughs> she learned English on that movie. Did you know? <laughs> He only knew her lines. That's that's the fun fact that everyone always stupid says about fun that. fact. Yeah, I know English. No one marvels at me. Jesus, I speak <laughs> I speak English pretty well. I guess. Uh, moving on from that, uh, some nerd news. Michael Waldron to write both the Avengers Age Age Hang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars. Um, good news. I think this was a while ago, but we didn't really get to talk about it. Yeah, this is good news, and I think a lot of it is because. Um, at least it has someone who understands what they're doing and yeah. understands the universe a little bit rather than just trying to throw in a big name just for shits and gigs. Um, cause we, we've seen Loki, uh, which is great in my opinion. Um, Loki season two, uh, he was a showrunner on less. I think he was a writer on Loki season one and just the showrunner on two, yeah. or maybe he was just showrunner on both, but both great things. I like multiverse of madness more than most. I think most can agree. It's not awful. Um, compared to like uh, a lot of things, a couple things we've gotten recently from the MCU. Um, I think the multiverse of madness discourse is so funny because like, yeah, MCU fans hate it, but like non MCU fans like it because of Sam Raimi style. That's fair. It's like I, the funniest. Th it's like the funniest thing watching MCU haters like praise an MCU movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. I, I think and I think the reveal of Scarlet Witch being at, like that wasn't at the time. I feel like we don't give it credit for like that. That wasn't in any of the trailers or anything. No. You probably could have guessed it, but that was a cool reveal at the time. I thought um, I was a fan of that one. Um, and then the movie's not perfect by any means, but I do enjoy it. And then Agatha Dark World of Diaries teaser trailer. I'm gonna give it a chance, but uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. I'm it's, definitely it's gonna give it a chance. Characters. Yeah, it's another one of those side characters. I don't know if they can really, really do anything about. But also, like I thought the same thing before. I, 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 me and a lot of others probably thought the same thing about Loki. Like, how are you gonna give them this? I, I think if they make the show good, it's not an issue. But if you keep giving us these side characters that aren't good, then who gives a shit? Um, so we'll, we'll we'll see about that one. Yeah. That could be. That's a big question mark. I saw um, a lot of people are, are upset, questioning, like, why are we giving Agatha a TV show, but why are we not giving White Vision, or whatever his name was, the Vision from... I think um, they were supposed to, weren't they? Yeah, they like were, Paul Bettany doesn't want to get in that fucking suit anymore. Yeah, that CGI that, wait, wasn't there a time where White Vision was going to be a show? Did they scrap that yeah, or something? Yeah, I think that got scrapped. A lot of shows probably should get scrapped. from. I think they should just stop. I don't know. I didn't, I, I didn't think <laughs> Agatha was like, and obviously, it was WandaVision was not an Agatha show, but I just mm -hmm. didn't think it was interesting enough, or she as a character yeah. was interesting enough. I love Catherine Hahn, I will say. Yeah, so I love her Catherine. too. I think she's a big fantastic. fan of Catherine Hahn. What did I just um, see her in? She was just in um, The Holiday. Yeah, she's, she has a small oh, role. Oh, really? In, yeah, okay. she had a very small role in The Holiday. And I was like, oh, shit, she looks yeah, mighty. Yeah, I young. think she's hilarious in all of like, and like Parks and Rec and, and um, uh, Step Brothers and. Um, a lot of other things that I can't think of right now. I think she's a genuinely hilarious actress. I just 
I, I, I don't know if I can get behind this one. We'll see. I'll still watch it. Of course, you know how I'd be, um, moving on. We're going to, like I said, we're going to switch, uh, the real quick, like Patreon recommendation, put it in the mo- in the actual episode, and then we'll do my fun little game for the, um, for, for the real quick this week. So Connor Covington or Con. I don't know how to pronounce this. Connaughton, I'm go- I'm thinking Connor Connington um, gave us this recommendation of a, a draft of our favorite acting performance. I just figured we could keep it more of a discussion. We do drafts a lot. Um, don't want them to get like too stale. So if you ever want to recommend, if you you don't have to recommend, I think everyone recommends drafts because they're the easiest. You don't have to recommend drafts if you ever want to recommend like a like a discussion that we could use for an episode or anything like that. So we're just going to keep this maybe top three, top five, whatever you guys have doesn't even have to be top. Mm -hmm. Um, But George, I know you had a list. So if you just want to throw out your acting performances, um, we'll spend about 10 minutes talking this Mm -hmm. and then wrap up the show. I am. I'm not going to give you, I'm I'm going to change up a bit. I know you said like, I'm going to stick with like favorites. Like I'm not going like all time best. So I'm going to throw out like, obviously on my list would be Heath Ledger's Joker, Daniel Day Lewis, and There Will Be Blood. But I want to throw out just like some miscellaneous yeah. acting performances that I just fucking adore. The first one, uh, Kate Hudson in After in uh, in Almost Famous. I just watched that movie th- for the first time like maybe three or four weeks ago, and I just I fell in love with the movie. I fell in love with her in this role. I think she's just absolutely stunning. Um, this is more mainstream, but and Cam, I'm sure you were gonna throw this out. Paul Mescal in After Sun. I I really think that that's just such a heartbreaking and just beautiful performance, and I think he works so well with Frankie Corio. I think their chemistry in that is just fucking mesmerizing. Um, I know we just spent a lot of time talking about Natalie Portman, so I'm gonna throw out her performance in Annihilation because I think that's one of the performances in her career that just she is obviously one of the greatest actresses of all time. And I think black Swan is her best role. Um, and obviously she's getting a lot of praise for, um, may December. And then she also has, um, black Swan. yeah, black Swan, uh, lay on the professional. She's has, she has so many fantastic performances. And I feel like her performance in annihilation, just the really Phantom Rent, the phantom menace. Yeah, the, of course. Of course. <laughs> Everyone's favorite. Um, another movie I recently watched, um, Maybe not recently. This was probably a couple of months back. Um, but Spike Lee's Crooklyn. Um, I want to throw out Delroy Lindo in that role. I think he is just beautiful in in that role in, in capturing this 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 battered man who's just trying to keep his, his hopes alive. Uh, him, him and Defy Blood should have been nominated. One of yeah, yes, completely agree. Absurd. Fuck yeah, Oscars. just a ridiculous so fucking yeah. snub on that. Um, Koji Yakusho from uh, Kyoshi Kurosawa's Cure is another performance I want to throw out. He's also in uh, Perfect Days from this year. Um, so two performances that I really, really adore from him. Greta Gerwig and Francis Ha. And sorry, I'm rambling. You guys can cut me off. Whenever. No, you're fine. Keep going. Um, Greta Gerwig and Francis Ha. I just it, uh, it it's it's another performance like Kate Hudson and Almost Famous, where it's just like a very comforting performance, like. I just find a lot of comfort in this character and and, and her journey, and I just I, I just I fell in love with with Greta Gerwig the second I watched this movie. Um, two more that I want to throw out. I'm throwing out. Everyone's got Killian Murphy from Oppenheimer on hit their minds, but Killian Murphy in Sunshine is just a really really good performance. I think he he. I don't want to say he carries that movie because I think Rose Byron, Chris Evans, Michelle Yeoh, Cliff Curtis, I think the whole cast in that film is just fucking amazing. But I do think Killian Murphy is the standout there. Um, and then another performance that I don't think this one gets thrown under the radar, but I just think it's another another role where Kurt Russell just has so many iconic roles um, that a lot of people forget um, his just brilliant performance in um uh, escape from new york which i just think he's just it's just like the most badass performance out there and i just fucking love it it's like yeah. it's one of those performances where it's like it's not it's, it, it was never going to gain any oscar buzz or anything like that but it's just like every time i watch escape from new york i'm like damn he's just so good as this like this badass character like he's he's it's like uh it's like bruce willis and die hard like it's just He's just so good at just being like this man's man, like this like really badass um, uh, character. 
Um, but those are just some of like my favorites that I wanted to throw out. Obviously, a ton more like Saoirse Ronan and Lady Bird, uh, Mahershal Ali in Moonlight, um, Dev Patel in The Green Knight. There's just there's a lot of like miscellaneous performances that I can list out, but I'll let you guys go for a little bit. Yeah, Tyler, throw out some names. This is just guys like saying random. Just acting. guys talking about acting performances. Yeah, that's all <laughs> yeah like, yeah, I'll kind of do a George did, I guess, kind of go over some ones that maybe aren't talked about the most because obviously I, one of my favorites of all time, probably my favorite of all time, is There Will Be Blood, Daniel Day Lewis and Edward Norton and American History X. But I feel like we've talked about those a ton. So little ones we haven't talked about quite as much. Like Joaquin Phoenix and her, I think, might be one of his best, if not his best performance ever. Uh, he's incredible in that. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen and, uh, another round and the hunt. I always think one of the most unfortunate things about Mad M- Mads Mikkelsen's filmography is all his best films are international films. So I think the majority of people don't really get to ever see his full range and full potential as an actor. Cause I think it, at least his top two performances are kind of stuck in a, in, you know, a different language where most people aren't really going to be watching them as much as, you know, fantastic beasts and uh <laughs> secrets of dumbledore type movies. And Dr. Strange. <laughs> yeah, that too. Did and, you see uh, he, he Raz actually... Agul. Someone asked him in an interview, like, why do people keep casting him as, like, the the villain in, like, American it's, movies? It's voice. Yeah, he said it's because of his accent. People just love, like, that menacing, um, yeah. what is he, Norwegian or something? Whatever he is, people that. like that menacing, like, accent of his. Mm-hmm. Um, from there, let's see. What else do I kind of want to give a shout out? Danish. Danish. Some, uh, some more shout outs. Let's, uh, let's go... Let's see. I'm just scrolling through my movies list, trying to pick out ones that I feel like we just don't talk about enough because there's obviously a ton of movies we love that I feel like we never really get time to put in the spotlight. Um, I love Drive My Car. That's like one of the most like underrated movies. I feel like in terms of no one talked about it after the Oscar buzz kind of died down by Ryuzuke Hamaguchi. I think the acting performances by both the leads, uh, the actor and the actress, I don't have their names pulled up, but were incredible. I haven't seen anything else I think either of them were in. Um, when uh, does Evil Does Not Exist come out for everyone? What is oh is that the Ryazuki Hamaguchi movie yeah. from uh, New York Film Festival? Yeah, I don't know if that I don't know if that's going to be released this year like yeah. wide, but obviously I think since it was at a film festival, I think for Oscars it would have to be this year. Yeah, but I haven't heard any buzz about it, so I doubt it'll be getting any Oscar buzz. Um, a movie Cam always shouts out, but I think the acting in Hell or High Water is great. Love that Hell movie. Yeah, the writing yeah. in it's great as well. Nice. Um, Shout out to Taylor Sheridan. In the Mood for Love is just a quaintly devastating yeah. movie that's just so softly performed, but so well done. Good shout, good shout. Um, Carrie Mulligan, a promising young woman. I think she just commands respect the entire her, time. Yeah. Just absolutely yeah. dominant yeah. performance. Inside Lewin Davis is probably my favorite uh, acting performance from uh, blanking on his Isaac. name, Oscar Isaac. Oscar. Probably my favorite performance from him is in, uh, in Inside Lewin Davis, which is, again, another movie similar to um, In the Mood for Love, where it's like they never really have that screaming in the church scene like daniel day lewis but their performance is just so incredible throughout um which is exactly the same exact thing in say for walking phoenix and come on come on such a great performance in that and the kids kid actors around him really are great in that too which kind of if they weren't then the movie would not really have such an impact so that that was incredible as well um but yeah i'm just kind of just going through my movies that's pretty much all the ones i mainly wanted to shout out out of my like top movies here mm-hmm. Trying to see if there's any, like, I kind of want to shout out, like, a comedic performance. Honestly, I talked about it last year on a TikTok, and I saw it in, like, my, like, one year ago today. But Jim Carrey and the Grinch, awesome. I love Jim Carrey's performance in that. He, uh, that's definitely, that's a role where, like, if you didn't have someone commit as hard as he did and pull it off the way he did, the movie would be, like, a one out of five. Like, it could yeah. it could have just been so bad if he didn't give a Joker-esque performance, honestly, inside of that green little fuzzy cat suit <laughs> um, but just an incredible job and and he, i mean everyone always talks about the truman show of course and uh um what's the other one i'm blanking on eternal sunshine the spotless mind everyone's yeah. always like jim carrey has acting chops look at these but like he, he's even in comedic roles where people don't give people as much credit like he he is always banging mm-hmm. um but yeah cam uh cam what are some you want to shout out and then hereditary we always talk yeah. about that one but tony collette so good my number one will always probably be like Heath Ledger's Joker, just because um, I love, you know, Joker and Heath Ledger. So I think it just uh, like I love that movie and I love Joker. I think that just works, you know, but that's like you said, a one we always bring up. Um, Ryan, Ryan Gosling in La La Land is one of my favorite of all time. Um, I think one of my favorite voice actings, uh, again, Soul Jamie Foxx, I think is 
probably my favorite. Um, the Big Sick, I love uh, love both performances. Uh, Kumail Nashiani, most specifically, though, uh, I think he's amazing. Uh, Carrie Mulligan, um, you mentioned, and Promising Young Woman is so goddamn good. One of my favorites of all time. Shout out to uh, John Favreau, not a, not much of an actor, but in Chef, I think he's absolutely amazing. It's one of my, uh, definitely one of my, up there for one of my favorites, um, especially in like more underground i could shout out ryan gosling forever but blade runner 2049 i think is his best his best performance um a couple others to throw out there from last year um definitely my favorite performance but stephanie sue and everything everywhere all at once of course has to be noted um is she in that new she's in that new movie with ryan gosling right fall guy or whatever i I didn't i don't think so maybe emily blunson and i know that i I don't know if she is that's all I know about the movies. That's Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling, but there yeah. could be others for sure. Yeah. Get, you check on that and let me know. Going to the old biopic route, because I love a good amount of biopics, obviously, uh, can't, Andrew Garfield in, in uh, The Social Network. But I also love Jonah Hill in both Wolf of Wall Street, but most specifically uh, Moneyball. I think he's so awesome in, in Moneyball and has that, you know has that like moment where he's explaining baseball and he's like, this guy's the most undervalued player of all time. Cause he throws weird. Love that. Love him yeah. so much in that. Ryan, uh, Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, Winston Duke, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Hannah Waddingham, Cam, and, okay. and Stephanie Sue. I, I remember Hannah Waddingham in the trailer now that yeah, you bring it up, but I, I don't remember Stephanie Sue. I'll have to check that out. There's a trailer? Uh, I think, yeah, there's a trailer out for the fall guy already. Yeah. I didn't know. Um, I want to give a shout out to Sir Ronan in the Grand Budapest Hotel. I think she's awesome in that. Good shout. Um, like you mentioned, uh, just because uh, recency bias and just watched it, Joaquin Phoenix in her is absolutely amazing. Um, go comic book route, Tom Holland in Spider Man Far From Home. <laughs> Not even a meme. He's great in that. I fucking love that movie. Um, oh, uh, I, I did want to mention this one um, Haley Steinfeld in The Edge of 17 awesome so goddamn good and I love woody that. harrelson and I love in the edge of woody 17. Harrelson the <laughs> i still need to see that movie yeah, yeah you gotta movie. watch that one um probably my favorite from 2020 the sound of metal riz ahmed uh, i think shout. he's absolutely amazing want to give him a shout there, there's a ton um what's her name from crazy rich asians give me a sec give me a sec she was also in joyride but i their name's escaping me yeah uh constance Wu. So goddamn good in that one. Um, I think Emma Chan's great in that as well. Uh, but yeah, big fan of that movie all around. And then the acting performance in it are, are fantastic. I'm trying to just scroll through my list right now and get some off the top. I like, uh, damn, I keep, I keep forgetting her name. Uh, the mother from How I Met Your Mother in Palm Springs. Nothing. I don't know her name. I, I, I didn't come Colby. To no, not the, that's not the actual mother. Colby Smothers is like the one yeah, everyone Colby wanted Smothers him to do it. Colby Smothers is Robin. Um, damn. Sure. Uh, Kristen Milody. Milody. Yeah. She's going to be in, uh, she's going to be in, um, uh, the Penguin movie or TV show. Um, uh, but also JK Simmons, all around great voice actor in general, but I'm going to throw out Omni man. Cause he's just fucking awesome as Omni man. What about Marmaduke? Uh, <laughs> yes, definitely Marmaduke as well. Uh, I'll throw I'll it. throw out Tenzin from uh, from Legend of Korra. Okay, I, li- I like that poll. I don't I don't think I've watched Legend of Korra since it came out. It's good, probably yeah. Um, Very good. And then of co- of course uh, going going the um, TV route. Got to give a shout out. Best acting performance of all time, Mister Mister Ted Lasso, Mister Jason Sudeikis. <laughs> uh, I love love him dearly, and of course Pedro Pascal in the, in the old armor for Mandalorian, doing a whole lot of nothing. Uh, no, but uh, a lot of got a shout out. Got a shout out, Michael Scott, and as Michael Scarn in Threat Level Midnight, <laughs> yes. being able to uh, being able to commit great. to knockout villains as a hockey player yes, is, is just great. intense. That one's a big one. I, I like that one for sure. Uh, but those are those are all the ones that I wanted to mention. And then some uh, we didn't. I just like throwing out a little discussion every once in a while and just kind of sh- spouting off random <laughs> random names that we like. So shout out uh, Connor Connington for for that uh, uh, for that um, 
recommendation. Topic recommendation. Um, and then Scarlett Johansson and Jojo Rabbit before we move on. But um, <laughs> yeah, shout out him for that for that recommendation and topic of discussion. We will see y'all. We have a game, a guess the guess the movie game coming out on Thursday, and I have it all ready on the PowerPoint. I was doing that during the pod, so I hope it wasn't too noticeable. <laughs> but I got ten movies. Um, kind of, I kind, I'm kind of proud of how it turned out. It's just PowerPoint, so it's not anything special, but kind of proud how it turned out. Um, and then her is the is the real quick review, which is fantastic. So go watch that if you have not seen it. Um, Shout out to our executive producers. I got uh, Alexander Biscardi, Cody Whitney, Connor Connaughton, which Cam couldn't pronounce, Dakota Buckner, <laughs> Dean Cotamanidis, Dylan Ship, Ferdinando Four, James Magos, Jimmy O'Connor, Jordan Gag. Josh Hines, Casper Lundberg, Luke Deerhog, M. Bate, Remy Walker, Roka 1.0, Robert Leo Gislason, Sean Morales, Stefan Johnson, Will Kim, and Zach Graves. Also, I cleaned up our merch site a bit, so it's a little uh, more organized and cleaner on there. So go check that out in the description down below. Um, gave it a little bit of a refresh. Um, but yeah, Cam, you can uh, segue us out. Yeah, nothing. Just fantastic. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for listening and supporting. Um, Thank you for everyone who's joined the Patreon. Uh, shout out Real Talk merch. Go um, check out realtalkpodcast.com. Buy some merch if you, if you want. It really helps us, and we appreciate all the support. Um, Tyler, George, thank you for being here. Seth, I hope you enjoyed your lovely day with your mother. Um, we'll see you next week on episode 65. Have a nice one. Peace. <laughs>